Okay. Sucio talk, hanging out. We'll call this the dungeon today. This is the dungeon, the truth dungeon. Hanging the out truth with truth dungeon. The truth dungeon. Is it like the heart dungeon, but like, <laughs> like exactly instead of like we Canadian we, guys withering in pain? It's like they did not have lovely two thousand. 2016 Hoops Vineyard. My, That's right. My is back. 2016 Merlot. Hoops Vineyard. Okay. They're not a sponsor, are they? No, they're not a sponsor. They could be a sponsor. They could be a sponsor. So, but I did do I did do a dinner with them. Okay, so That's Hoops Vineyard. They have supported. All right. Uh, well, we we don't need to give it that much. Yeah. How Mountain they could get Valley. more. They could get more airtime. Dude, it's actually Lindsay Hoops. Don't ask for money on this show, bro. <laughs> I'm not saying for me. We I'm ain't saying fucking for no money out here. I'm, just, I'm not saying. Anyway, we'll do a cheers right there. Boom. Cheers, show. Hey, congrats. The new 2.0. The new studio, baby. What it's on. So, how you been, man? What you been up to? I've been traveling quite a well, bit. Well, since we last spoke. Yeah. December. Because that, that was recorded December That's right. 2021. Recording December, it came out in like two months later or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It is now like we're halfway through the year, yeah. essentially. Have done some travels. Uh, You've eaten at some very cool spots. New York. Yeah, New York. Uh, I, well, technically, the barn at Blackberry Farm is in Wall in Tennessee. Right, right. I was going to say Knoxville, but that's like the closest major town. Yeah. Wall in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, a few times to LA, of course. Uh, Honolulu, Denver, Minneapolis, San Diego. I think that's it. That's it. I want okay. to That's it, Chef. Just uh, you know, about five, six cities. No no problem. Uh, <laughs> I mean, once upon a time it yeah. used to be like every weekend. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You uh, you were telling me that. Like my first climate talked. What's it called? The, your carbon footprint. Yeah. Very large. That's very true. It was a very large carbon footprint the in a very large carbon car- in a carbon <laughs> carbon box, carbon sphere. It's like big feet and big other feet. <laughs> but with carbon, <laughs> but it's not Andrew, something that <laughs> Andrew, what the fuck, man? Anyway, so we're here to talk about fucking everything under the sun. We've been having a great time. We went to uh, Tacos Paisa. I went to with Jeff Davis. Uh, Whose episode is coming out tonight. That's right. Tonight at 10, uh, episode out. Although, of course, by the time this yeah. comes out, it's long in the past. I was thinking I about did. roping you into this week, but I um, I like when I have the time to, you know, if no, you say I mean, anything stupid. you got to have <laughs> – you got to do things at your pace. Yeah, no, I right? I mean, this is literally, like, your show. Yeah. Your place, mm-hmm. your studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's studio. a lot, man. It's a lot. But, uh, uh self care as well. Exactly. So I need to soak in the tub before these talks. You know, my mom keeps telling me to look at the camera, but then I'm like, but I have a guest. She was talking more about the solo show. She's like, you're not looking at the camera enough. But I'm like, well, you are the guest. That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't feel. I feel like I like not looking at the camera because then I'm more in my thoughts. That's really, really what you're there for. You're not really there for me. Yeah, I mean, you know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, like, it w- I guess from a presentation point of view, it would be better. But yeah, like, the meat of the episode is exactly. the content of your audio. And, like and I'm also self-producing, like, yeah, you know, which is but, something completely new for me. A little note, a little studio note, taken from the top, add in. That's right. It's like when you have a show, it's like mm-hmm. you got some notes from the network. Exactly. So I'm also the network, and everybody. HR, you know, so I have to make sure that I'm doing the right thing always. Um, yeah, so congrats on the uh, next. Oh, dude, it's stage. fucking, it's amazing. Uh, it's going to be a cool uh, jumping off point to, uh, you know, a lot of a place where, you know, people can come and talk and be honest about their opinions of shit. We were just talking about this, um, how some chefs ask you for the opinion on the meal, right. you know, after you have it and how you feel sometimes. And I feel sometimes like you can't be honest. Because they're, you Unfortunately, know. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, because uh, you don't never know why they're asking you. It's usually, oh, I'm just, I just want to know your opinion. But usually, they just want like a pat on the back. Yeah, you know usually, what I mean. Usually, it's fishing for validation. Yeah. So. Which um, I understand. Like that's just human nature. Like everyone wants to be told, like, 
you're doing a good job. And yeah. Like, what you're doing is the right thing. And how do you think that we come away from that and we um, kind of change our opinion of, of that? Like, do you think there's a way? Honestly, I think it's a maturity thing. It's just a person to person. Mm-hmm. Because, like, some people, when they ask, like, well, what did you think of it? They don't really know. Right. Um, because if they do, I mean, there's there are exceptions, of course. There are some shows where it's like, oh, that, that's a good show. Or, I see what you're saying. Or, but it's, sometimes it's like, what do you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So why'd you Dude, fucking ask me like in the first it? place? Yeah. So it's just a waste of my time. And it's a waste of their time, frankly. Because mm. if and you're not willing to change, why right, ask like for advice? Just like, then I'm just gonna, we're going to butt heads. Why? Over like, food? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it? it's it is their livelihood. Yeah, right. It's their career. It's their brand. It's their reputation. But if you're not actually gonna like really open minded, whether you actually take my advice or not, or mm-hmm. my notes or not, that's fine. But if you like, you're really not even open at all. Uh, let's not waste our time. Right. Yeah. Right. Then we're just gonna waste our breath. And be like, oh well, this was easy. This was. Do you um you know being a person that goes out to eat a lot, are you going into a si- any situation like, I'm going to critique this, or do you just sort of let it happen mm. and then live from there? I mean, I, of course, I hope every meal is awesome. Right. Uh, but you know it's not going to be. And, it, like, there's people who are like, I'm going to go in there with no expectations. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Go like, in there with expectations. I'm like, you, you should be expecting to pay for a meal. Right. <laughs> You're like, what is this, a bill? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no, like there's some basic things that like you know, when you know the concept of the restaurant, like mm. what type of service it is or what type of like inspiration it is. It's like if you go into a movie, you're like, I'm going to see the Godfather. Yeah, I'm like what, so you're like going to go see like Toy Story and you end up seeing like Hostel? Right. Okay. I g I can understand like, that. What? Like you kinda know what you want. What you're getting into yeah, you're getting somewhat. Into. Heard that. Heard that. Like, you can't treat McDonald's the same as, like, 11 Madison Park. No. Because what do you think about that, 11 Madison Park? A lot of stuff has been coming out about oh, them. Oh, good point. With their 56% I have not been. food cost and Ooh, shit. That's not good. Something like that. Somebody, I, I'm i only quoting from what somebody told me, but they were basically. I mean, it's quite possible. Yeah, the uh, article uh, that they read, that's what it is. I have only said. been to the restaurant uh, one time. Yeah. In 2003, when they were with me. Killing it, right? And um, it, it was a very, you know, solid American fine dining restaurant. Yeah. How much was the meal then? A lot. Yeah. I do not recall. I would have to, like, look through my credit card history or yeah. something. Uh, but, you know, easily, like, 300 bucks. Like, yeah. I mean, for sure. But I don't recall wine the exact. Wine two fifty. It's like uh, I, I wasn't man. really getting into the wine variant at, at that time, mm-hmm. I and mean, even now, I was like, what do you think about their move to all vegetarian? At first, I was skeptical. Okay. Because I was like, is this like a new Coke thing where they're like, here's <laughs> the Master Park, the original formula. Here's Coke back. Zero. You may anticipating that duck. It's back. Yeah, but no. It when he lost. You think, you think that the veg menu was the McRib of EMP? Well, I thought it was just like <laughs> we bring it here, a gimmick, and then you're kind of like, oh, this, is a, and we're gonna bring it, in, and then we're like, yay. <laughs> um, but when he actually lost other business deals as right. a result of his commitment to like, I mean, I was like, wow, he actually is down with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be open to trying it, but at the price point. Knowing just like purely, there's only so many things you can do with plant based. Right. Probably going to be fine. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot. Like, if it were a lower price, but you know, obviously, apparently they can't afford to do that because their food cost. The food cost is ridiculous. It's apparently very high. Yeah. Um, eh, there's an opportunity cost to it. Right. Like, I don't live in New York City. Mm-hmm. So if I go to New York, and you go to EMP, that's a time and money commitment that you're taking away from. Like, I could go to this place, this place, this place instead. So I'm intrigued, but I'm not that intrigued. Okay. Yeah. 
I can understand that. Um, so New York, you went there to eat. What restaurants did you Back in to? April. Back in April, yeah. Uh, I went to Four Horsemen for okay. brunch. Who's the chef there? Uh, is Nathan from Four Horsemen. Okay. Um, they have a Michelin star. Four Horsemen. Four when Horsemen they get the Michelin Brooklyn. star. I don't think so. In Brooklyn? Yeah. What neighborhood? Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here comes yeah, the borough. It's like the, the like geography that, of, yeah. uh, you know, the boroughs of New York. It's like, what is it? Next to a train stop. It may, <laughs> it may or may not have been. Yeah. Um, how was your meal there? What, what kind of food? Um, dining or what are you talking about? Oh, I mean, they're fairly star, but it's not like fussy. Food. So right. I would, it was, there's some like, some Asian influences, I guess, but it was kind of more of a wine, especially liquid natural wine, um, leaning restaurant. Wine leaning, so it's basically like a, a wine bar. Pretty closely, yeah. Okay, yeah. Heard. And Which uh, seems to be like that's what's popping off these days. And it's more known because like James Murphy used like a you know LCD sensor, so it's one of the owners. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got you. Um, and just so I know, how do you plan these trips, and how do you pick the restaurants that you're going to eat at? Because in well, New York, in, I'm sure there's in this particular forty five restaurants. I haven't been to New York. Uh huh. For three years? For five years. Five years. Over okay. five years at that point. Mm. So it is a lot of catching up. Did you have any restaurants that closed during pandemic that you never got to go to that you were like, Oh, definitely. Oh. I, mean, I, I mean, not necessarily in New York. Fair enough. But like, for instance, Birch in Providence, right? Ah, that's right. I want Shout you to That Zuko. was uh, very high on my list for the U.S. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it is gone. Mm-hmm. That's the saddest part about COVID. But it definitely did teach me a lesson. Like, go out to eat. No matter how fucking tired you are, or like how much you have to work, I mean, well, you, you gotta, I'm just saying, man. Everything. I'm just saying, bro. Don't force it. You know, I forced it on the road trip. I was like, "There's no way that I'm gonna miss out on eating at these places because you never know. Yeah, you never know. You know, you can't take things for granted. No, you can't take things for. But granted. at the same time, you can't go everywhere. You, I mean, but that's a that's a narrative I'm trying to change, Andrew. You I only have so much like stomach space. You can't. Well, look after eating. Five meals a day I, on the road trip. I went way too hard in New York <laughs> on one day, yeah. and I was like, "Did you have to throw up in between meals? No. Did you do a bang bang? Did you eat two dinners at once? It was bang bang adjacent. Okay. So I went to like, uh, well, that, I'm skipping it now, but like, so the first place I went to Four Horsemen, I went to dinner at Adamant. Uh, How was that? It's like terribly hard to get in there. Yes, it is very difficult. How'd you get a resume? You know somebody? Some man on the street. Okay. Okay. Although I did attempt. How many Probably. seats are in there? Not a lot. Ten? No, or more tw- than ten. Like Twenty. Right. I'd say somewhere like maybe twenty. Okay. Hundred percent. And how long is that tasting menu? It seems to me like it, if it's so exclusive and it like. I'm. Guess. Five to three. Are they um, are they core um, do they have different turns or is it all just one turn? I believe they have two seatings. Okay. But I am not hundred percent on that. Where uh, what seating did you eat at? The second. Second. Okay. Any memorable dishes there? Yeah, I mean there was like a lamb dish, but like it's one of those um, restaurants or like when you look at the menu, there's so many like commas. This element is on. They're like, I, I really would have to like go back to like to do it justice. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, so you went there. Where else did you go? Uh, I went to Katz's Deli. Oh, of course. Wait, you never been to Katz's Deli? I've never been to Katz's Deli. Oh, because the fucking line's always long. No, I mean it's. What'd you think? It's not worth the wait. Well, I didn't have to wait, unfortunately. Okay. Or I didn't have to wait either, but I, I just. No, when I, I went ate there, it, I, was I like, went there early. I would never wait for this. I was, I wasn't super impressed to be honest. But yeah, like the pastrami itself was like good. The uh, pastrami was fire. But I thought like the bread was like not the greatest. Mm. Like it, the structural integrity of the sandwich was like kind of like kind of dry. And yeah, I could see that. Definitely really flaky. Yeah. Okay. That kind of let it down in my mm. opinion. 
Um, but it's an institution, so yeah. it's like it's cool just to be there. Definitely. Um, I was not that impressed with my sandwich. Though. I was like, it's it's good, but it's not like. I mean, it's, I'm I not gonna wait in line for it. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. Like it's it's neat, mm. but like I'm good. Yeah, I I don't care for the things around me. Sorry to be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I'm adamantly opposed to it, but there's opportunity cost as right. a visitor. So. It's in a nice neighborhood too. The market line is around there. Yes, and that place is wild. That's a. Uh, Best damn cookies. Yeah, best damn cookies is in there. Yeah. Uh, the dudes from um, Wild Air have a wine the, bar in there. The is it? Yeah, oh. they got a wine bar in People's there. People's wine. Yeah, so there's a lot of spots that are opening up within that space. Yeah, that are like done by f- pretty awesome people. And you've been to Wild Air? I did go Wild Air on oh. this trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. How was it? It was good, but I I went in way too late. Okay, first time you went. Have you been to Contra? Contra, yeah. Uh, I was going to do a Contra Wild Air. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. But you were too full from the meal you had before. Yeah, well, what happened was uh, on that particular day, I, the chef of, of Sema, mm-hmm. who I know from Rasa, which is now closed, in Burlingame, has one star, or had one star. Okay. He moved out there to New York, and now he's a chef of summer. He reached out. He's like, I would really like you to come visit me here. And I'm like, oh, of course. Like, you know, cool. But I'm also like, you can't eat too much. Uh, I have Wild Air. Because mm-hmm. Wild Air is like another place where like, I've been meaning to go yeah. for a while. And then you went, and they just gave you the whole menu? No. But like, I went to summer, and I, I was like, oh, yeah. let's have like maybe two dishes or so. It was not good. That's a lot of dishes. A lot of food. Yeah. And like, uh, I was like struggling. I was like, oh, and I got wild air. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, you're like, I mean, it was good. Contemplating puking. I appreciate the hospitality. I appreciate the generosity. Yeah. And the consideration. But just on a sheer physical level, I was like, I- I'm hurting right now. Right. Okay. Um, and so you went to those spots anywhere else? Uh, I went to PDF. In Brooklyn, PDF. It's this new, relatively new sister restaurant. Like a PDF named after the document. What does the acronym PDF stand for? In the restaurant setting, no, or in, in computers. We gotta look that up. Okay, because I have no idea. I thought about. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I have no idea what PDF means. I don't even know what dot com means. I think it's company. Is it though? Well, I don't know. What's oh, dot us mean? U.S.? Really, though? I don't know. I don't think so. It, it's a guess. Yeah, hence, whatever. Hence, hey, hence hey. the tone. I can't end your thing. We got to do this. Um, hence the tone. I'm like, I don't know. Um, it was not said with uh, extreme confidence. No, no, no. Um, have you been to Lilia? I have not been there. I went to Lilia in New York I would a like couple to. months back, and it was amazing. Very ripping. Really good. I mean, but and people. You went, to, you went to Via Corotto for a long time. Yeah, I did. How was that? Yeah, I, it was amazing. That's another, like, yeah. up and, there. And it was better this time than the first time I went. Yeah. The first time was years ago, but that's cool, like, knowing that you can go to a restaurant and f- four years later go back, and it's amazing, as amazing as it was the first time you went. And I gotta say, I think just that like, it, those Italian pantry restaurants yeah. that get everything from imported from Italy just have an upper hand because those ingredients are like top of the line. But are you, know? you like one of those really strict? Like this is not a Neapolitan pizza. No, 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 like no, 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 no. Because <laughs> if you're like that, then you essentially are missing the point of American food. Like, you know, if you're going to a restaurant and they like, even though they serve that food, they're still in New York City. Right. So it's like there's influence everywhere. They're using U.S. water. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Which I, I tend to think that the water has a lot to do with the, the flavor of the, your restaurant. The terroir. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 
Does it taste like it fucking t- copper it's pipes? Or it tastes like the Howell Mountain. Kind of like piss or, you know? Or well, does it? I don't know about that. You know? Maybe. You know what I'm saying. Like, sometimes you go to some bathroom bar and you smell the rain. Like, uh, there's some water does taste weird in certain ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me. Can you remember outside. anywhere specifically where you're like, yo, this water tastes like shit? Not, not offhand, but I stayed in a hotel in Santa Monica on the beachfront. I was gonna say like I'm not, I would and not be super like, keen to have LA tap water. Yeah, LA tap water is fucking horrible. Um, but I said it tastes like light Lipton soup. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was like, I just wanted to make a reference to Lipton soup. Are they a sponsor? No, they should be though. But they could be. Lipton, actually, you never know these days because every company is like. But then you got their you hands in palm Lipton oil in like a negative light, huh? You spoke about Lipton soup in a negative light. You're like, well, you know, it's you know, not negative for me, but what I will it, say it's is like, like in uh, Breaking Bad, where like the tequila that they drank in season four. What is it? Like they couldn't use a real brand because they portrayed it in negative light, so they had to create a fictional tequila. Really? Yeah. When did they portray tequila in a negative light? And well, Breaking is Bad? this spoiling the show for you? No, no. Spoiler alert! If you haven't right. watched Breaking Bad, turn this. Which just came out a while ago. At yeah, this point. it came out ten years ago. So uh, please watch it. Yeah, if you have Or when Gus tainted the tequila and brought it to the cartel, and then they all drank it. Oh, they got poisoned. That was a baller move. Where he went to the bathroom and threw up. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think any tequila man was like, "Let's let's switch ourselves with." Yeah. Okay. It's uh, just like when we had uh, the first um, COVID outbreak and Corona beer stopped selling because they yes. had the name. Yes. Like people associate that with the name. They're like, nope, not doing it. It's interesting. It, like, remember, like, Sar Nikolai getting canceled? It's like, they were Russian. Yeah. I mean, they've been Russian forever. Uh, Russia's been fucking us since forever. What do you. <laughs> Uh, they are a uh, California-based company. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Th- well, I mean, there's definitely some importation going on, you know, from that area. Got to be no. But with Sar Nikolai, the caviar. And I don't know much about them, but who's like? Were they started here in California by yes. a Californian for California? Mm-hmm. Like they're they're not a Russian brand at all. I think there was, like, inspiration behind the name. Oh, this is news to me, man. I always thought well, that Sardinia was, like, a huge Russian company that, like. So if you think about it, then what Russian caviar are we actually eating? I don't. We're not supposed to eat heavy, right? Like, well, okay. Funny story. I was doing, <laughs> I was doing, a, um, I was doing a class with Truffle Shuffle, and I was using Russian banana fingerling potatoes. <laughs> Okay. Right. But are they from Russia or is no? Like, that's just the varietal right. name, that's right? That's the name, right? So like I Russian said that. River Valley. Yeah. Is not in Russia. <laughs> exactly. It's in like Sonoma. <laughs> Sonoma. Yeah. So basically, I say, yeah, these uh, these potatoes are a Russian variety called fingerling, and immediately I'm with Jason doing the class. He's like, these potatoes are not from Russia. Like, please do. Like but these yeah, potatoes came to, from California. Always have to remember that someone doesn't know that. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. Like, I remember at Nightbird, someone, co- we're like, hedgehog mushrooms? You're eating hedgehog? And I was like, that's just the name of the mushroom. Somebody thought you were actually eating hedgehogs? Well, not me personally. But yeah. So when they saw hedgehog mushroom, I <laughs> it's like, hedgehog, that's cool. And I was yeah. like, it, it is a mushroom. Right? That is just the proper <laughs> name of the mushroom. It is not literally a hedgehog. Not a, we're not serving hedgehog here, folks. Or like oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Lobster mushrooms. It's like. Those are still mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> um, after New York, where'd you go? Uh, I flew to Knoxville. Uh, went to the barn at Blackberry Farm. Okay. Which is a very uh, exclusive, prestigious expensive restaurant. resort. Yeah. How did you stay there? I did not. Okay. Where'd because you, you I stay? The motel was down not the interested in spending that much money on lodging. Although I'm sure they are very nice. Well, you were telling me that you view hotel rooms as a box to put your body in at the end of the night. 
they're they're human lockers. <laughs> well, I guess if it depends on what you're looking for, right? Yeah. If you want the whole like amenities and like spas and right ocean view, are you into that? No, like that? not really. You don't like that. I not, I don't, rather I don't be, I don't actively dislike it, but I don't need it. You'd rather be in an all white room with well, shitty I wouldn't cable. Say, I wouldn't say I would rather. Okay, but I'd just be like I'm not willing, at least at this time. Yeah. I would rather apply the money towards restaurants mm -hmm. than lodging. Lodging, to me, is functional. It's as long as it's relatively clean, relatively safe. You got nothing to worry I about. Yeah, it's all good. What do you want? Um, Knoxville. What'd you eat? Well, besides Black Bear Bomb. Yeah, besides that. Uh, Lawrence Faber, who's the former pastry chef at Black Bear Bomb, because has his own deli. Yeah, because wait a minute, Blackberry Farm isn't in Knoxville, is it? It's like it's outside in of Knoxville. It's nearby. No? Like right. if you went there from like Knoxville Airport, and yeah. took an Uber or something. How long? It would be like 20, 25 25 minutes. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, so it's close, but it's not formally in Knoxville. Okay. But when people talk about it, they say it's in Knoxville. Well, it's, it's in Walton, Tennessee. Okay. So like when you see like – Walton, Tennessee, like – Back in, like, uh, when in situ was a thing, they had oh, that's of, right. They had one of Cassidy's dishes on the menu, mm -hmm. and it's going to say Blackberry Farm, Wall in Tennessee. Is in situ open? It is not. Closed. When did it close? I don't recall exactly when, but it was during lockdown. During lockdown. Um, Knoxville. How long were you in Knoxville? What do you do when you're not eating? In these Usually trips, in these just playing on my phone or sleeping. Right. What do you play on your phone? I think it's called like Instagram. Okay. The game of social media. The game of social media. What do you? <laughs> or just like looking for world doc, doc, world domination. Or on Instagram? like I'm looking at like progressive, right? Catholic like stuff. You know, it's like Sasha Banks might be released by WWE. Clickbait. I think she is now. For sure. Yeah. See, that's the thing, man. You sometimes as a boss, I feel like you give a lot of confidence to your workers. And sometimes it works against you where they're like, oh, you know. Well, she won it. She fucked won it out thing. before. Like, she like, couldn't hurt anyone. Where's she going to go? Probably AEW if she sticks with wrestling. Maybe Japan. Right. I think she's probably going to cross over into acting. Well, I mean, she was already in the Cory Hart season two. Oh, she was? Yeah. Okay. She had her own action figure. Really? As, like, the mainland right now, the Sasha Banks. Who does she play? One of the, I forget the character. Is she bad or good? I'll say good. How's her acting? Suitable for the role. Mediocre. You, you, don't, you don't see a lot of range in that role. Mediocre. It's okay. Um, she's the she, boss. She'll get there. Yeah, she's the boss. Uh, Sasha Banks is also Snoop Dogg's cousin. Correct. For those of you who didn't know. And therefore, Ray J's cousin. Oh, that's right. Let's that's not right. forget about Ray J. And who is Ray J's sister? Ray J's sister is Ray J. Is Brandy. Brandy. But I was right. like, we got to give Ray J some love. That's right. For the love of Ray J. Ray J doesn't get a lot of love. I feel like he didn't benefit half as much from that sex tape with Kim Kardashian. You're not really watching it for Ray J. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is why I've been waiting. <laughs> I never even thought of it that way. He's a vessel. It could have been anyone. He's a vessel for it Kim. Been it could have been anyone. It could have been anyone. <laughs> Maybe her and Pete Davidson should put one out. Nobody wants to I watch mean, Pete Davidson have sex. Someone will watch it. <laughs> I think most people will watch it these days. Yeah. I always think about that. I'm like, there's a lot of people, though, that... that uh, but again, you're not watching it for Pete Davidson. True. There's a lot of people that lose credit for, uh, for doing porn. Like, uh, there's a, a famous actor in a movie who actually got a blowjob in the movie, and then after that, he, they blacklisted him. Oh, it's Hollywood. like unsimulated. Yeah. He had a uh, sexual relationship with the woman on air, and then after that movie, he just stopped getting picked for shit because they were like, "You're a porn star now." So I feel like I mean, there's timing like, is everything. It's like, exactly, it's like too, uh, too. Maybe the culture just wasn't ready for it at the time. No, for sure. Uh, it depends. Do you think a chef could make a sex tape and use it to become famous? Well, yeah, but I don't think it'd be kind of the fame that you necessarily. Are looking for <laughs> if you're just looking for fame at a pure principle yeah then yeah 
I thought we probably would move on after the, yeah. the, the news cycle. For sure. But that, a whole new that would be your legacy. Not to say it's you. Yeah. It could be you. It ain't going to be me. No woman. You're saying there's no me. demand for uh, the news cycle. There's demand for me, but. There is demand. There is I can't demand. stop looking at the camera. There <laughs> so is demand. I almost feel like it's like the office where you're like looking at the camera. Like, like I'm like a. You're trying to get a reaction. Like I'm like looking at him like, uh, what do we say? <laughs> Just block you. No. Um, not the first time that that's happened. That you've been blocked? Mm -hmm. Weirdo. You're probably talking shit to women on Instagram or what are you doing? Harassing people? Well, talking shit, but not yeah, to women. Okay. Nice. Talking shit about restaurants? Is there any chefs right now that hate you out there? Probably, yeah. Yeah? Do you, do you think you know any of them? I could probably write a list. Right. Yeah. And uh, do you think that they hate you because of the critiques that you've made about their food? Or? I think there's been per some perceived slights. Right. Which, you know. Who knows? Maybe it's for just reasons. Right. But I'm also not necessarily looking go out of my way because they're still alive you know I get that I get that um after Knoxville where'd you go uh I went with a couple friends and we drove from Knoxville to Nashville oh Capricorn okay. City where oh went to? with Baxter with Brian Baxter how was that meal for me it was the meal of the trip and that included New York that included yeah not no disrespect but Same like me, I thought man. it was a very strong meal. Um, it's so intimate, and I've never had his food like that. Right, like I've had like he's worked for other people, but like this is Brian. Baxter. It's just him, yeah. yeah. So I was, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was very good. I want to know what he's gonna do after. I uh, that might be episode two. Yeah, Brian Baxter episode two. I hope so. We'll do it indoors this time. Not on a, the porch of Catbird Seat. Catbird Seat, though, institution. Like, a lot of great chefs come out of that place. Yeah. Um, and his, his... Including uh, Eric Anderson. That's right. His, his um, residency must be ending soon. I don't know what they're... Usually it's two years. Is, two years. But I'm sure sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any speculation as to who Jeff's going to be? I, I mean, I've ne I haven't been right ever since. Ever with with Cabernet, but I also don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because like he used to work for Ross McDonald. Mm. He was the chef de cuisine for Bastion Seat. Oh, that's right. So he was already known to work for him. It wasn't like it wasn't like some guys coming off the street. I don't think they had like a big. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't think they had as, as exhaustive search as, like, finding the new chef of Canlis. Right. Grady was the chef of Canlis before, before the chef I, now. Before Aisha, yeah. Gotcha. What's Aisha? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, right. Yeah. Who used to work for Manresa. Manresa. And then. Was she CDC down there? I Sue chef. Sue. Sue. And then she worked Under for Romero? No, no, no. Like, this is way back. Way, way, way back. Okay. Is Romero still the CDC over there? I believe yes. Okay. I'd have him on the show. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Last time I went there, I had a great meal. And um, it's been a while for me, but how? When's the last time you went? Well, twenty nine or twenty twenty, but that was a collab, so I don't really count it. Okay. Who they? Who like did they when collab I went with? to Meadowood, I went to like twelve days. That was my first ever like Meadowood experience. So I didn't say like, oh, I went to Meadowood. Like, like yes, technically I've been in the facility. But up until I went to there properly, I didn't count it because mm -hmm. I was like, mm, "That's not a re reflection of who I am." Right. Yeah. Um, in Nashville, where else did you? Uh, Rolf and Daughters, Locust. How was Rolf and Daughters? There's a lot of um, chefs that are coming out of there that are doing doing good things. They seem to have a good uh, training ground. I mean, it was busy. It's, yeah. It's mostly pasta. Would you say it's like a Shafiko kind of thing? Kind of. Yeah. Like it's more modern. It's not like traditional Italian. Okay. Like it's, it's, it's a very contemporary, but as a pasta oriented. 
when I ate at Locust, um, the chef from Golf and Daughters was there. Oh, Philip. Yeah. And uh, Trevor Moran just played death metal the entire time. It was amazing. Yeah. What did you think about Locust? Oh, it was cool. Yeah. It, was, it kind of was like... A lot of energy in that room. This is what I imagine if, like, Roberta's open to, like, a izakaya-type concept. Okay. Like, it has Japanese roots or influences, but it's it's its own thing. Like, they have their own little touches that make it unique. And definitely a must-go if you're in Nashville. Are you going to these places one right after the other? Or is it like New York, break for a month? Well, in this case, it was Not one continuous trip. One boom, boom, boom. Yeah. How it long? Was, it was trip. like eight nights. Eight nights. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. Well, because in the past, pre-COVID, um, I would try to consolidate as much as possible and maximize. Because like, I can only take so much time off. Right. So it's like, I don't know when I'll land. So like when I went to Europe, I would like literally be like Stockholm one night. That's it. And I, I'm moving on. Paris. Yeah. Berlin. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to fit all the restaurants in. Right. But it's, it's also a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Very exhausting. Like it would be probably better if I were like in COVID for a little bit, lingering there for several days. And stuff. So like when I say like, oh, I've been to these cities, I don't really say like, oh, I, I am an authority on visiting. I'm like, I went there. I I was on a mission. I went to these specific restaurants. That's it. I didn't go sightseeing. If I see like something, like passing by Big Ben, in an Uber, mm. in London, like cool. But that was not part of the culture. So it's not really a well-rounded trip. You're just strictly going there to eat at yeah, restaurants. Yeah, it's a mission. Yeah. You don't go sightseeing or anything. I'll I might go walking. Just to kind of like feel the city a little burn bit. Burn calories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Get ready for your next meal. Yeah, like in in Seoul, Korea, like I went, I walked 10 miles. Yeah. And that was my first time in that city, in that country. I thought you were going to say it's the first time walking 10 miles. It is not. I'm kidding. <laughs> and I was like, it's like, I will walk 10 miles for food. Well, on separate I didn't have to. Chef. Separate. But I did it because I was like, I went to Born and Bred. Right. Which is extremely meat focused. Just so you know, the double bacon cheeseburger is one of many courses in a tasting room. Where? At Born and Bread. Where is that? In Seoul. A, a cheeseburger. A double bacon cheeseburger. This is just like their take on. Now, we're not talking about a slider. We're talking about eight ounce. We're talking adult. Well, it's cut in half. But right. I was like, but they know, like, this is, like, purposely excessive and gluttonous. And stuff. But I was like, I have to be prepared for this meal. Yeah. What comes after that burger? I have to look it up. But it's more meat. Yeah. That's fair. It's more meat. It's all beef focused. <laughs> Every course? Yes. Even the beginning? Yes. Oh. Well, they go just raw into mm -hmm. medium rare and then not cooked all the way? Or? I mean... With the exception of maybe dessert, I think it was like in course food. What do you think about uh, foie tastings? Good gosh. Well, how much are we talking about? <laughs> Every course. That's just too much. I mean, I That's like to... Wagyu, though. It's yeah. like if you have to win Wagyu, it's just too much fat. Yeah. Like if you are about that life and you can actually tolerate it on a physical level, hey, it's your life. Go ahead. Like, sure. But like for me, I'm like, Already, I've been. Like, oh, that sounds a little dangerous. <laughs> you watch Iron Chef, the new one. The new one, yeah. I saw like a couple of. Which ones? Like the first two. I mean the chef. Uh, well, the first one was Mason from Tricking the Wolf. Okay. And he went against Curtis Stone. Mm hmm. And then the second one was uh, Esther Choi. Right. She. Uh, Who'd she go against? He went against Marcus Samuelson. Right. Right. I saw, I saw that one. Yeah. Marcus Samuelson was cooking these two lamb racks, mm -hmm. and I was just looking at him doing this, and I'm like, 
what is going on here? Like, the, the technique was off. Like, the whole thing was off. I was like, this is not how you do this. But then I take into account, I'm like, the timing, it's a competition, I get it, but at the same time, I don't get it. Like, it was a really poor showing of how to cook a piece of lamb to the point where even the, the dish that was received by the judges, they were like, yo, you didn't render any of the fat on the bone. If you're going to serve right. a lamb rack. You need to render the fat on the bone. Oh. And so it's like. You, you might make some questionable calls when you're putting in an unfamiliar environment. Like yeah, I hear time you. Time limit. You don't know this kitchen. You're like, oh, we got to do something. But it's, it seems to me like that is no excuse when you are the an iron chef. Like you're not. You're not a uh, um, going there to challenge. Right. You are He's, an iron he is chef. Iron chef. And also, I watched the Curtis Duffy one. Have you seen that one? No, I didn't even know he was on this. Can show. I spoil it? <laughs> I, I think you. I think you got as I am. I mean, look, he, go ahead, go he goes against the Tellier Crane. Well, you mean Chef Dominique? <laughs> chef Dominique. Yeah. She all she did was plate chef. Let's be real. Just being real. Not hating. Just, he didn't go against the restaurant, is what I'm saying. <laughs> he went against the restaurant, basically. That's He's fighting. Because the, the CDC, who's the CDC about Tell You Crane right now? I honestly don't know. Okay. I need to find that out. Cause because, like, Knit is now opening in Cora mm-hmm. with the Water to Table people. So I don't know. With Ben know. Spiegel? You know, like the Contis. Joe and oh, Andy right, right. Water to Table. Andy Conti, the name reminds me. The movie or just in general? Just the name. Like every time I see it, I'm like, oh. Anaconda. <laughs> They're nice, very nice people. But Ben Spiegel used to work for Water to Table. And I had no idea, but Ben Spiegel was like an up and coming chef back in the day. I had no fucking clue. Yeah, I didn't Ma- know you Maddie, worked for Maddie Cameron was the one that schooled me on that. Yeah. Um, I had a uh, dim sum work once. Oh, dope. How did that At Yang Sing. Yang Sing is amazing. That's a good that's a good lunch uh dim sum cart for back you. back in the uh they don't have carts, do they? I believe so. Yeah, but I think isn't it the place for, where you for had to lunch order, you had to order like by checking boxes and submit to them? I've been to places like that, but from what I remember, Yang Sing for lunch especially was a, a cart place. Unless I, I could be wrong. I could be mixing it up with like Hong Kong. I could too, all, back then. Hong Kong Lounge. Never mind, Two. I'm mixing it up. Two. The Hong Kong Lounge is the one with the There's Hong the Kong cards. Lounge 1, which is still around, but 2 burned down. 2 burned down? Yeah. Really? Yeah. There was huh. like that explosion. What? When? Like 2019. Hmm. Of the restaurant itself or like something next to it? I think... It, but like it's, it's gone. In any case, it's gone. <laughs> it's like who cares who fucking lit it on fire? It's gone. Maybe it's gone. It's it's not coming back. <laughs> it's gone. I think maybe it could be Hong Kong Lounge One. Yeah. It'd be like there can be only one. There is only one Hong yeah. Kong Lounge. But like, let's be honest, Hong Kong Lounge Two is like better. Hong Kong Lounge, lovely dim sum in San Francisco. Now gone. Right. Now gone. So then, where'd you go from Nashville? Did you go to Honolulu? Uh, no. In that case, I was I just went back to California. Okay. I, so that was trip. One. I made an un originally unplanned trip to L.A. and then from L.A. I went back to SFA. Where'd you eat in L.A.? Well, Alex Atala was in town. That's right. And he was doing a little event in downtown L.A. And so I saw that, and I saw tickets were available, and I was like, ah, like it's like right at the end of my trip, I'm just gonna add it on. Where did you see it? On either. Okay. I think that there's no, I was telling you this earlier, there's no publications for uh, pop-ups for the, the little guy. You know what I mean? I think so. The people that are doing it, like, you know, they reach out to Eater, and Eater doesn't necessarily give them attention. Obviously, this one has Alex Atala, so Eater's going to be all over well, it. Well, it's also, a, like, one of the Gates restaurants. Mm. Got you. But yeah, Socio like, Talk will change that. To raise awareness of We will raise awareness up and comers. I just need to I need to be able to go on a website and see where all the pop ups are. I think when it's they're also, happening. It's and, a communications yeah. issue. But like yeah, well, it's, it's 
To me, want. Instagram just doesn't get the message across like it used to. Well, I mean, you can't just be like, send a message to your like, whatever, sub, 2,000 followers. You can be like, oh, show up. Can you send a message to every single follower at once? I don't think because al- if that's I a don't thing, think the algorithm allows. Because if that's a thing, I would be all over that. I don't think the algorithm allows for it. Okay, but I guess you could do it. Good. It's just that, but even if you did, how many of those people live in the area? And on top of that, how many of those people are free on that night? All right. We came back to California, went to that tasting. How was the How was the dinner itself? I mean, anytime you. Go to these type of things. You know, like, it's good food. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, disorganized. Be busy. And, yeah. And gotcha. it's like, food's like not going to be that great. Right. But it actually, it surprised me. It pleasantly surprised me. Okay. Um, but, like, basically, you're going because it's like, this is Alex and Donna public. You get to meet him? Yeah. Cool dude? I mean, very. Limited interaction, but yeah. yeah. Like, hey, how you doing? Moving on. Pretty much. Okay. Um, is there any uh, chefs that you would like to meet, like personally meet? Like no food involved? No food involved, yeah. Just like meet the person? Maybe David Chan. Because he's become kind of, especially like with like the whole, I mean, he's been a big influence on me. But just he is like kind of the closest thing to Bourdain at this point. In some many ways. David Susio right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know about right behind him, but give me twenty time years. Will tell, we'll be man. there. Um he's got a podcast too. I don't yes. listen to it. Do you? I've listened to a few, especially during lockdown. So I'll ask you this, because it seems to me like you listen to more Susio Talk than David Chang's podcast. Yeah. Is that a true thing? Okay. Well, I also know more people like personally. Right. Or, yes, so on that's, the show. So that's what brings you to the show. In part. Okay. Gotcha. Because I'm always trying to figure out, like, who listens to what food podcast? Why do you listen to it? And I know that people listen to David Chang's mainly because he is David Chang. Um, yeah. And sometimes I just wonder why people listen to it. Well, I think, I think if you, especially like, not to say that this is a California or Bay Area centric, but like that's where we are right now. Yeah. And so I think if you're more in tune with that scene, it's going to be a little bit more relevant to you. Very true. So I guess you are right because that's what I found with the road trip. When I was going around to these places, I was. Um, actually in the mix and meeting people and talking to people, yeah. that was when the show mo- like mainly grew. Mm. Like a lot of people don't know about the show yet. Um, sometimes I'm surprised that as many people know about it as they do, you know. Like they'll come up to me at restaurants. Like I charred rope the other day. Right. It was a kid, 19 years old probably, the server. I was like, charred rope, I think you may have heard of that restaurant. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something like that. And uh, he's like, Hey, I'm the biggest fan. I listen to all the episodes, and then I notice I'm like, this show necessarily is is like not for my peers, or maybe the chefs that have already made it. It's like for them, you know. It's for the hospitality crew, the chefs that you are going to dine with in 20 years. Versus, well, I mean, they all got to start somewhere. Exactly. And uh, like when I say like David Chang was an influence, obviously I did I didn't work at Mona Lisa, mm-hmm. uh, but I read. Because Bourdain mentioned the book in Medium Raw, the Momo Fuji cookbook, um, and it has like a really strong like memoir or autobiography aspect to it. I found I really like related to that. Now, was I actually using that as a practical cookbook? Like, no, like I'm, I'm not using it like to make ramen, mm-hmm. but just reading aspects of his like upbringing and whatnot. So I was like, Some, sometimes I see on your social media you do cook cookbooks. Uh, yeah, especially during lockdown. Just something I was like, got to improve skills. We just got to keep busy. Uh, you wanted some kind of project to 
work on. Okay. Look forward to that wasn't related to like work or you know, you're supposed to get your mind off. There's only so much T V you can watch. That's right. Like not just like this because so this is straining mm-hmm. on your eyes. So I viewed that as like this is a project. This is like I'm gonna suck at it, but it's a process. To me it was like building model airplanes or whatever. Right. But you get to eat it. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> Sometimes it's not, but that's part of the thing, right? Like, do you blame yourself or do you blame the recipe? Both. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, I've... I've I Sometimes know, I read recipes and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know personally that there is some recipes in books that are not the recipe. Where there's like... They do not work. When they say like, oh, you need to salt the pasta water. It tastes like the ocean. And I was like, when you die? <laughs> <laughs> But maybe I'm taking that too literally. No, I hear you. I took that way too literal the first time they told me. Like, like, like salt it like the ocean. So I salted it like the ocean, and the kid tasted it. It's actually Howard Coe. He's a chef in, in um, Dubai right now. Right. And he goes, a cell Dubai. Former chef of Bear and Monarch. Right. Yes. Former chef of Goose and Gander. Um, it's a bar in San Marino. And he was like... He was like, what the fuck kind of ocean do you t- do you taste? He was like, what the fuck kind of ocean you're talking about? That doesn't taste like the ocean. I don't know if you want it to taste like yeah, that. Yeah, no, you don't. He, threw, he li- threw away my water. Not on a literal yeah. level. But I will say, like, there's a, there's a certain thing that I think about with uh, cooking pasta or anything. It's like, why don't we cook pasta in chicken stock? Like, what? what is is our, there a chemical? No, but it'll make it, it taste that much better. You know? I mean, you could try it. I just don't understand, like, why we're we feel the need to cook pasta in salted water. Like, there's so many other mediums, and you wouldn't like, uh, you know, working at a restaurant on a daily and a weekly basis, you're throwing away stock. Every restaurant throws away stock for the most part, right? Even it, if it's two quarts, three quarts, you can't whatever. really use that on other things. You know what I mean, you like, make. You what make, are you going to wire the plants with stock? Hey, like, I don't <laughs> think that's going to work. Exactly, but I've, you know, even my time at Meadowood, I've thrown away entire twenty-two. I think we need to consult like the the Douglas McMaster silo zero waste. Yo, I need to. I want to talk to that guy because uh, I need to figure that out. How how does he do a no waste restaurant? Like you're telling me, like coming to LA next week. Because what kills me is, and I think about this, it's like okay, you have this no waste restaurant. Here are your ingredients. What about your dishwasher? Right. Like, are you still running? You know, over a more than 2,000 gallons of water a day. Oh, where does that go? You know what I mean? Where does that go? I don't know. Where's the soapy? That's what I mean. Where? You can't water plants with that. Exactly. Or does it go into a filtration system that then oh, takes that out? There's a thing um, where I got this booth. There's a, a food truck like parking lot. It's like where you park it, where you wash it. A commissary. You keep your food right. A commissary. Yeah. And they had a crazy. I used to work at a food truck commissary. Oh, no way. Yeah. Cool. What do you do there? Well, I worked on the food truck. Treasure so. Island? Was on Treasure yeah, it was Island? in LA. Okay. It's like South Central LA. Got you. On uh, Treasure Island, there's one. And that's where I got the booth. And I go there, and she's like, oh, that's that's this industrial oh, car so wash. This is So this was a foraged. Yeah, yeah, I foraged this Facebook marketplace, baby. Yeah. It looks like baller. This is like, this is like a, a gangster booth right here. You know what I mean? The one at the back of the club that. Just don't drink the tainted tequila. I will say drinking it. This um, maybe Douglas McMaster needs to go to Lemass Park. Maybe this is one of the tables or this booth was used in one of the original comedy clubs in San Francisco. Like Lenny Bruce sat on this booth. A lot of greats. And now, and now Jeff Chef David Sutio sits here with lovely guests. Drinks wine, Scoffier cookbook in the background. Hoops, beautiful Merlot. campus. Hoops Merlot. The yeah. works over yes. here. We got a new logo. Right, new, new studio. The main reason for the new logo is to make it easy to read the other one. Uh-huh. People would be like, I can't read it. So I had to kind of make it a little more less angry. Still high, but less angry. It's a microphone. Yeah. But in a different context, 
give you a pineapple. Oh, I can see that. Pineapple Dave's. The new rendition of Chef Sucio. So, yes. California, you go to Honolulu. Chef Key, all right. We, there. I ate with Chef Key. What's the name of this restaurant? Bar Maze. Bar Maze. Yeah. Okay. I was it's a saying. sister restaurant, uh, oh. Bar Leather Apron, which was just recently on North America's 50 Best Bars. Really? But Who's the chef over there? A leather Apron? Yeah. I mean, no. Or it's just a bar? I mean, I think they have a food menu, but it's primarily just a cocktail. Okay. I went to lunch with Key. I did not eat at his restaurant. Well, actually, I did stop by Barmaze for a drink. How's he doing? I think he's doing fine. Is he from Hawaii? Yeah. Did you get? Uh, did you ask him like how it was to move from totally like California? Well, he, to Hawaii? he was like in Carmel. Yeah, so it's all, like a little bit. I so I think he's like in like one of those little like acres of city in Hawaii. Right. I'm trying to get uh, Justin Cogley on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He's a he's a really awesome guy. I mean, he, he has like quite the career, right? Char- Charlie Trotter. Yeah. Man. Guy's the man. Are you kidding me? And he's so positive. He's very he's very positive. He's person. a he's a dashing chef. I will say. Oh, he is beautiful. He's, look at that hair. He is beautiful. I will say. I will say though, he looks like. I'm saying I will say. You um, did say. I did say. He looks like the villain from. The king from Robin Hood Men in Tights. That is a very specific reference. Yeah. So I feel kind His of name's Richard something. Richard Lewis? Yeah. Justin Cogley looks like Richard Lewis. From Kirby and Davis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks just like him. But when I show you a side by side picture, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, when I, I have him on the show too, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna ask him if I can Post a picture of him side by side with him. I don't know if he'll agree to the show now. Yeah, he will. Come on, it's it's all <laughs> good like, fun here. Come, here, here. come on, man. <laughs> like his 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 uh his running shoe sponsors are gonna be like, oh yeah, podcast. Fuck yeah, plug the shoe. He does run a lot. Yeah, he runs a lot, oh, and and he runs like trail running, which is not easy. Very admirable. Yeah, like up mountains and shit. Yeah, so I was in Hawaii. That was for a collaboration dinner mm-hmm. at Miro um, with uh, Chef Dave Grill from Embla in Melbourne, Australia, mm-hmm. who I had met very briefly. You say emblem? Embla. 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 What was, his, what was his last name? I might be mispronouncing it, so I apologize, Chef, but it's like Hercules. It's all good. You can't you can't rem- possibly remember every word for Chef. Well, I know how to spell it. it. I people with an E U L. Verhul. I guess. That's, yeah. Verhule. Dave. His name's Dave. Yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah. Chef David's is amazing. Name one Chef David that's bad. Well, this kind of goes back to the who do you think doesn't like <laughs> you list. <laughs> And David there, that doesn't there, like there you? is a Chef David, I think, who doesn't like me. Oh. Which is notable. Really? Yeah. Baron? Less than that. <laughs> Less than that. Could be. I mean, it's possible. I don't really know him. I met him briefly. But, so like, His son, I went to Pajoli. Right. It was fire. It was really good. Really just like did they do restaurant. Did they do table side duck breast at that time? They, they uh, didn't have it. We had to order it earlier. We, like, just walked in. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah, they, they just left. But, um... Casey I definitely Palomino want to go back there. there. Casey Palomino? Palomino. The chef? Former CDC of Little Caesars. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that... The Willows Inn people dispersed to a lot of places. Yes. Harbor House? Many at Harbor House. Many at Harbor House. I met one at, um... In D.C. at Johnny Sparrow's joint. Was he, like, working at... He was... Yeah, he was, at like... Reverie? He was a cook, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, From Washington to Washington. Oh, I didn't even... I didn't even think about that. I like that. 
Um, do you think, like, how long ago was that article? That article from, I want to say 2021. 2021. Like a year Literally ago. Last year. Yeah. Do you think there there is still, like, room for that place to become something else and, like, get past that? Not under current management. You think, at this point. Do you think they have to completely remove themselves from the place? Start all new? If that particular location was a, like, was going to be a viable business. Yeah. Then yeah. At this point. Yeah. Who's there right now? Daniela and Blaine. But I don't think Blaine's part of the day, day-to-day. I'm not 100%. Yeah. I, kn- I know for a fact she's not. Um, it must be weird, though, like... Because I had a couple cooks that went to go work there, and I'm like, imagine, like, going to work there after an article like that comes out. I would not. I mean, ultimately, it's their lives, but. Yeah. And to be clear, I, I don't personally wish Blake or Daniela ill. Right. But very serious claims. Allegations, allegations yeah. Made. I would need some significant counter evidence to be working on a daily basis. Mm. Would you go to eat there? At this point, no. Are you going to let the time pass, or are you going to wait for a new manager, new management? I mean, I've been twice. Yeah. Um, what did you think when you went? Well, first time I thought it was very good. Okay. Second time I thought it was not as good as the first, uh, but still good. Uh, I never came across the claim that everything was sourced from the island. I think if I had, I would have been like, that doesn't make any sense. But in my experience, I don't recall that ever happening. Maybe that's different for other people. Uh, but yeah, it's not a good look. No, definitely not. Optically, very poor. How does a restaurant come back from that? That's my question. With the same management? I mean, what does a Blaine Wetzel do after? Like, if he leaves Harbor House, or if he leaves uh, Willow's Inn, I was like, uh, where does he go? You know what I mean? Or is it just done? Is it, are we done with him? <laughs> like, well, I mean, he was very big on denying the, the claims in the article. Mm. Uh, I, I think that if I were advising him, say I am or will, but if I were hypothetically, uh, I would have been like, okay, these are really serious allegations, racism, homophobia, <laughs> wage theft, food fraud. Uh, there's also the thing about like the Island 16 stuff. Yeah. Um, very serious stuff that like, even if you don't admit guilt, you have to at least emotionally validate that people feel this way. Mm. Whether it's true or not, people are hurting. People are angry. I mean, you don't go, it's so rare for people to go on record, like cooks, people that respond to you, go on record with anybody, with Eater, whatever, Chronicle. I think like 35 plus people went on record for that article. I would have have said like, you gotta step away from the business. Kind of like Vince McMahon right now. Yeah. Or at least the executive. You might have to be like, hey, I don't admit, like, I didn't do these things, but these are very serious claims, and we need to look into what type of person he's talking to. Probably would have done, like, a little step away, voluntary therapy, you know, some signs that he's, like, taking it seriously, instead of trying to improve. But instead, we just got straight up denial and, they're liars. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they might be. No sense of defense. Right. I, I mean, at the end but, of the day, I think the but, fact that he didn't take it to court to try to, like, like the Johnny Depp thing. Like, he I, was defamated. He was like, fuck that. That's not true. I'll I mean, bring you to court. I would welcome if there was actual significant evidence to counter the claims, bring it on. I would say I invite right now. I'm inviting 
Hold on, let me let me fix the camera here. I think this would be very awkward for me. I don't get it's fine, Andrew. It's your show, so we are inviting Blaine Wetzel. Get your fucking ass down here and talk your truth on this shit. And if you're really innocent, fucking disprove everything that's been said about you. No disrespect to the thirty five people that made allegations against you. But I'm just saying. There's only one way to fix shit, and that's fucking face it head on with honesty. Yeah, I mean, and there's it's a, not going to go away if you're it, just like, they're that's liars. That's what I'm saying. It's and just, I'm like, okay, it, then let's prove it. But that shit happens over and over and over again where you don't hear from the person. Well, you I'm know? sure there's also people that are like, they're not the best. But that's bullshit. Advisory. That's, you're already slandered in but the press. The, so that's but, what tells me that, yeah. I don't know, I'm kind of believing that half the shit is true because... I'm you know what I mean? inclined to believe it now, unfortunately, because, one, like, you don't come across people in the industry. Yeah. Like, how many times were you say, like, this person did not say, did not say, like, they wanted to be anonymous because their fear of, like, whatever. Right. But they went on record. Name. First, last name. So, like, that's out there. So, already, that means, like, they're pretty serious. And there's, like, no counter evidence. There's no, that's what like I'm saying. None. Like, you know, when Johnny Depp got all this shit, he was like, no, I'm taking you to court. We call it to witness. Yeah, videos. like, that's not, mm-hmm. none of this is true, and I'm going to disprove what you said about me. And I feel like that team hasn't done anything to disprove any of the allegations. If if they really are like, yo, these people are lying. To me, it seems very cowardly. It seems like it did happen, and you're just kind of hiding out. I mean, obviously, it doesn't you know? matter to some people because they're still going there. For sure. For sure. The E. But it's like, I don't know. I think about, like, bring up, like, a Louis C.K. Like, I loved his old comedy specials. I mean, he's still, like. Can, can I not listen to them anymore because he. Can, can you separate the artist from. Right? The. I don't think so anymore, man. I think art? we're going into a world where you can't, you know? Well, I mean, it's tough. Like, like okay. Obviously, this is an extreme example. Mm-hmm. WWE, Chris Benoit, right? Had he just killed himself, Hall of Fame, one hundred percent. But he also took out his wife and kid. Right. He's never going to Hall of Fame, no. ever. But if you were to go purely based on his career, his body of work, that's Hall of Fame career. Right. But can't really take away the fact that he's a murderer. Right. It's crazy. I mean, obviously, there's rules to society. There's severity. That, yeah, that's what know. I'm saying. Like, you kill someone, <laughs> obviously, it's that's fucked up. I mean, don't, I, don't fucking do that. But I just feel like there's... Well, I mean, when you get into, like, obviously, there's the stereotype that Gordon Ramsay, like, the, the chef is angry, yelling, mm-hmm. and then you got verbal abuse, which I really mean. I will admit we are a little soft. I mean, not you specifically, mm-hmm. but like just society. Right. We're a little soft and like, oh, that guy's French. Or like, oh, he's this old school. That's how it's done. That's how they were raised. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little soft on that. But at the same time, it like, it does happen. What bugs me more, although I, I sh- should take those things very seriously, is when there's like a totally, this is not work aspect like it's like oh he's yelling in the kitchen but it's about work right not great but okay it's 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 work it's yeah a, it's a high pressure environment no i uh, totally but understand. when there's like a sexual element to it like that's definitely shameful yeah like i i was talking about this uh on the last podcast where it's like you know there's certain sous chefs that you've had that are like oh you know they're they roast you, they yell at you, but it's not personal. And then there's another sous chef you'll have that will roast you, and then he'll, like, bring your mom into it. And you're like, whoa. Like, <laughs> she's not even here, bro. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the fucked up sauce. You know, now you're, you know. This is, like, that's personal. Mm-hmm. This is not even within the job description. Yeah. It's not based on performance. You're just, like, that's, like, you're just picking on. But, you know, I will say, them. like, for example, the NBA. They have all these players Every one of their players goes through media training, right? Because at the end of the day, you're probably going to have public to... They're public players. T- right? Yeah. Same thing with chefs. But no one ever is coaching us on how to 
carry ourselves, how to talk, how to control our emotions. Right. It's all just like. But with what money? Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's I like mean, a, we can't. We can't. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, unless you're like. Correct me if I'm wrong, because like, you're the chef. But other, unless you're like Gordon Ramsay, where you're like, okay, he's a chef, but like he he has a media empire, like he's, yeah, he's making Beyonce money. He's got multiple merchandise tie-ins and like he licenses Beyonce deals and, money, baby, and like TV shows, which is very rare. Like yeah. that's like a true celebrity. He's one of a kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we're talking purely like, this guy has a restaurant. Probably not swimming in cash. Like how there's only so much money to go around, and then you gotta get money to like publicists, like obviously the labor and operating costs. Where are you gonna get the money to have media training? You're not the NBA. NBA they're like multi million deal. That's where I'm sort of like, why can't we make that? I well, like I mean, I've, if you're if you're charging a lot more for restaurants for meals i feel like it's not even having to do with the restaurant itself but just having to do with like appearances for example like there's chefs that get paid twenty thousand dollars just to appear yeah and just thinking that there's some people that maybe can't market themselves as well because they don't have that it factor that should be making that amount of money because well, it will yeah fuel the artistry of cooking it's not necessarily and we discussed this a little bit last time, mm -hmm. but it was like it's not really necessarily just on the pure technical skill. Mm. By the way, like Corey Lee would be good. Like, Corey Lee would be good. Like, like a huge, like yeah. he's got a him, but he's like a quiet dude. Uh, I actually heard something about that dude that pissed me off today, uh, and, right. I will, and I will fucking share it on here. He had a he had a Christmas party. This is a uh, um, Corey Lee we're talking about, chef of brand new. And so they had the Christmas party, and basically he didn't talk to any of the team the entire fucking party. Mm. Just, like, hung out with some broad that he brought there. You know what I mean? And I think, like, just as a mentor, as a person who has people that, you know, spend their blood and sweat and tears on you, like, just give them some time. Yeah. But, I mean, and not to say this is the case here, but, like, some people lack that kind of mentor. Like yeah. Uh, also, I'm like, hey, man. Yeah. Chef, Corey, mm -hmm. he needs love, too. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Corey's working on that love. 40 years of no love. How old is that guy? There was probably some love list. I feel like he's he's a little older than I think. I never actually had seen him in person. Or eaten at his restaurant. I will. Soon. Not, so not in situ. Super no, 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 never. San never. Hoban or anything. Never. But I hope he sees this episode before I go to eat there so I get the real experience and not the this guy's VIP experience. <laughs> you want to be like, I want the real experience. Yeah, I want to be treated like a human being. You you like want to be like Gore Ramsey when he does, like, he goes in disguise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, this is really over the top. Yeah. He's like, uh, what disguises did he put on? Oh, he has, like, a whole makeup team. Like, yeah. He's, like, an old man. And he's like, I'm Gore Ramsey. I was like, what? <laughs> Does he take the costume off at the table? Well, I think in the kitchen right now. Okay. Uh, that's, this is so so culture and stuff like that. Well, for a while there, uh, that show, Kitchen Nightmares. I like the original. I, I met somebody that worked at a restaurant that was on the show. Mm. And basically, they crush you on purpose. Right. They don't let you come in to prep at all. Well, it's a show. Yeah, right? they it's set a the, reality yeah, show. They set the day. cameras up and then they bury you with fifty people that they You're ride in on a bus to like be humiliated. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if that's like if worth you're it. on a reality show and you like live in a house, like live in like. I would do a reality show. They're gonna give you tons of rules to live by because they're like, and they're gonna they, same thing with Top Chef. They're gonna deprive you of sleep. They're gonna give you Top a lot Chef, of food bro, because they want a recipe. Or conflict, or conflict, or yeah. Like some, you want you, they want you to be shit faced. They want you to make mistakes. A lot they of those guys on this on, is uh, just gonna be better. Maylin talked about that. How in the back room, 
you know, when they were waiting for judge's deliberation, it would take forever. And they would just have them back there and, like, cases of wine on cases of wine, and they would get shit-faced. And that's where mainly, the like, the arguments and shit would start, you know? Um, but I got to say, that, that show, that family of chefs have done a great job with the hospitality industry. I mean, yeah. It, it, like, it really helped a lot of careers. Mm-hmm. Of a lot of careers. I mean, there are some people who have looked worse as a result of being on top show. But for the most part, name some. I, I would argue that Jeff Bezos is worse. Really? How'd he come off to you? I, I felt he kind of come off as a little aloof and just weird. And just, well, I mean, he's killing it right now. Yeah, I mean, he has multiple sushi restaurants. Game, yeah. I feel like... Joe Rogan's fucking going I, to his I restaurant. I feel like being on the show didn't shit. really help him. Yeah. In my opinion. You think he could just, just, you know, I feel like he's he's too familiar to me. It seems to me like he I went to school with him, but I could be wrong. Did Philip Frank Lee go to Piazza Navona High School? I, you'll have to ask him. That's the question, Chef, on next episode of Sucio Talk. I somehow don't think that's literally the next episode. That's not I think the next episode, gonna no. be some other There's probably going to be about 50 episodes before I get him on. Well, now he's... He's got the Joe Rogan endorsement, so that's it. Six million people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, And he's opening restaurants in Miami. Right. He's opening a restaurant in Austin. Where else does he have restaurants? Well, L.A. Right? L.A., right? So, I don't know. I went to one during how? my the last six months. Oh, how was it? I went to Pasta Bar in Encino, the original. Is it good? Uh, I would... Or, to be honest, I told this to Nate a couple days ago. Uh, I prefer like pure elements of food. What do you mean? Like pure components of the yeah. dish? Yeah. Too much. Where the pasta's a little crazy? Well, it wasn't. Despite the name, it's not like super pasta sauce. Okay. Gotcha. You know? yeah, so, some personal preference. Obviously, mm-hmm. they have a mission star. So. Hey, do what you do, man. You don't have to like it. Um,. Do you have any uh, access to know the criteria of what gets Michelin stars? Do you run with the Michelin people? Not that I know of. Not that. I mean, people tease me all the time. Yeah. And be like, oh, what's going to happen now? Yeah. Wait, where are you going to go now? Oh, that's that's going to be uh, inspected. How am I? They'll let you know. Um. What was the, the newest uh, guide that came out? Was Florida. Miami? Florida, right? Well, technically, it's Orlando, Miami, and Tampa. What would you think about that? Um, I mean, good for everyone who got recognized. Yeah. But it was not a great look for Florida as a whole. Why is that? There was only one two-star restaurant in the entire state. Yeah. And it was another, like, the Telia de Rouge restaurant. And everyone else got, like, one or zero. I was like, that's not a great look. Well, I think also the but Iceland community has gotten backlash for giving motherfuckers three stars right off the bat. Every time they've well, done that, they have faced a lot of. I mean, conflict. that's pretty rare. So come on, but like, wasn't that the place in Japan a single two star? Yeah. Across across three major cities. Mm-hmm. But I always think that the Michelin guy plays a long game. Like, oh, yeah. Like, they, they've they already, I, I'm we, guessing here. There's some speculation. Some speculation that, that they've already, like, picked the restaurants for next year. You know? Or at least the restaurants that they're going to focus on going to to make sure that they are what they yeah, are. I mean, you know what I mean? There's no way they're literally going to, like, every They're not going to every restaurant. In, no. In no. California. But I, I do wonder what publication they listen to. In order of like to find restaurants it, it could to be go to, similar to us. Yeah, Word Yelp, mouth. <laughs> TripAdvisor, <laughs> might, might be Instagram. <laughs> yeah, All right. That's how it, like could Andrew be. Nolte found none such, which got best new restaurant mm. that year in Bon Appetit. She found it on on IG. It was as far as Jeeves. On Ask Jeeves, IG. Oh. But it could be on Ask Jeeves. I thought you said Ask Jeeves. I was like, damn, who uses we're bringing Ask Jeeves it, We're still? bringing it back. Bringing it back. I don't even know if Ask Jeeves was that, ever that big. Oh, oh, Windows 95, baby. 
You know there's some Jeeves fans out there. I want to switch sometimes. Is it ask.com? Do people use ask.com? For sure. It's definitely not gone. I still use it. But from, from what I feel like, it, I just don't get search engine ads until I use Bing. Is and Bing a sponsor of Susuoto? No, Bing is not a sponsor of Susuoto. Okay. No, I'd rather a Google. Bing. Oh, okay, so if Bing came with me, you're like, nah. If Bing came my way, I'd be like, mm, hold on out good. for Google. I'm good. Yeah. You know? Can a I man say? man of principles. Susio Talk is a, is a diva show. We only accept the best sponsors. Give that man that butterfly title. Exactly. Exactly. I only want, uh, I want to be sponsored by mainly underground people and, re- and like, individual restaurants. I don't know if they have that in the budget, though. They definitely don't. But I feel like a little bit of loot from a lot of places, you know. I'm, I'm going to say right now, I want to do advertisements on this show. I've, t- I've pulled the regular ads out, like the fucking abortion ads and the, <laughs> the presidential fucking election ads that were coming on. I took those off because um, I was sick and tired of them, like, cutting into the conversation. Yeah. So are you gonna do, are you gonna do like like? I'm just gonna do like live ones. Like if we were sitting like here, I'd it. be like, "Hey, it's like when you're watching like Oops, an episode, and they're like, oh, like when NBC had like the Subway deal, like, they're like, like this beautiful cow I corn. Had, I had some delicious Subway. I ate the shit out of this cow corn earlier. Um, that, I mean that's how it was back in the day for TV. Exactly. So that's what that's what I want to do. Where it's like integrated. Exactly. And, like, and that's gonna be. There's a lot of Budweiser drinking in Top Gun Maverick. It's a dollar a second, okay? Sixty dollars gets you a minute of David Susio advertising. What if they were gonna offer more? You just underpriced yourself. Huh? I know I underpriced myself, but I also feel like, uh, you know, the show's analytics aren't to where. Yeah, well, they don't need you know? to know that. But like, but that's what you pitch when you're trying to get advertisers. It's like your numbers. So well, the way the way it is is like you in need this scenario they're coming to you. Yeah, you need ten thousand. That's why I'm making it cheap for now because again you said there's no money in the budget. If you make it too expensive for restaurants and chefs to advertise on your on your podcast, also I can't accept ten advertisements per episode. So that's another problem. But I feel like also well you could be like a, like a NASCAR driver. Yeah, like wearing everything. Yeah, just <laughs> wear wear, wear like, patches. Oh, wear, here we go. Wear a leather jacket on the interview. Yeah. Could do that. Maybe like that Wayne's World segment. Like where they're like, you know, that's just really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's World. I never watched the second one. It was pretty good. But I like Wayne's World. Yeah. Um, have you gone to see any movies in the theaters lately? I saw Jurassic World Dominion. Jurassic World Dominion. And I saw Top Gun Maverick. Both times during my trips, so I'm like, you know, especially on my last day in a town, check out a hotel, but you have all this, like, dead time before, like, that final dinner. Right. Throw in a movie. That's when you go in the movies. Yeah. Okay. In between your, your meals. Because I don't have a hotel to crash at, but I'm also not at the restaurant. So what do you do with this limbo? Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can start moving there. I've done that. Watched, uh, I watched Django one time in New Orleans at this place that was a tasting menu restaurant. Oh, really? Yeah, so you could have a whole... Where was that? You could have a whole six course in New Orleans. I know, but like what restaurant? Um, I don't remember the name of it. Because it's like kind of rare to come across like a tasting menu. Yeah, it was in, like a whole tasting city. menu and like... And it was kind of... It was cool. Very cool. But mm-hmm. what happened was it was raining. So we had to just get somewhere. Yeah. And... When we got in the movies, we were like, oh, this is a good idea. And then they turned on the AC. Right. And then we were, like, shivering the entire time. And also very broke, so we couldn't afford the tasting menu. But they had one. So. Jurassic World, not a fan. The new one? Yeah. It just came out. Like, it's in theaters right now. Right. You went to go see it? Yep. Who's in it? Well, they brought Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. And then but all the also, original members, They brought right? back Sam Neill. They brought back uh, Jeff Goldblum. It's not and, good? And, well, why? Well, in part, it's boring. But also, it's like, it's silly. It's like over-scripted, too many characters. It's just clunky as a movie. It's a cameo movie. 
they based all their there were no real stakes. Like that's what I mean. They they based like, the whole movie like, on, on I w- stars. I want to see someone not like, a plot. There needs to be some sense of danger though. This is like a an action kind of science. There was movie. no sense of danger. I like someone needs to die. No one died. Just the bad guys. Spoiler alert. Just the bad guys. Yeah. Who's who's the bad guy played by? I forget. I don't know. But it was Dodson. Sorry, I spoiled the movie. <laughs> Dodge, Dodgson from Jurassic Park 1. Yeah. Uh, they brought back his character. Wait, Newman? Yeah. First of all, you mean the actor Wayne Knight who yeah. played Newman yeah. in Seinfeld yeah, exactly. and did his next in exactly. Jurassic Park 1. Exactly. No, it's the guy who met with Newman mm. in that scene where they introduced the shaving cream can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. That guy, that character, it's not the same actor. Because as I learned, and I posted on Instagram, oh, yeah. that dude is... He, uh, he did some weird shit. He raped a 16-year-old, He's no? a convicted... Uh, child molester. Child molester. So that's what happened to him. I feel like these days, as more and more of these fucking child molesters come out, like... Whoa, we took a different turn in this conversation. I mean, hey, whatever, man. This is what's going on in the world today. Literally, Unfortunately. every other fucking week, there's a new person. You know? And it's like... And it's people that we've watched and known for years, and then, like, it comes out, and it's like, fuck, man. Like, how many fucking... I bet all the listeners out there right now are like, I love Susio Talk. Hope nothing happens. Same thing with, like, every rapper, every wrestler that's out there that I love. I'm like, I hope nothing happens, you know? Well, I mean, it's hard, right? I I mean, not to say it's necessarily specifically that. Sorry, she pulled down. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people... Unfortunately, their their personal lives are are, are kind of tainted, and uh, the the people that they are are not the people they wish it would be. Yeah. Right? They're not they're not the character. They're people that we don't really know. Yeah. Especially in wrestling, there's like so many people getting canceled. It's kind of like this fringe, underground culture. A lot of like, a lot of hazing, a lot of bullying. Yeah, bunch of jocks. <laughs> so, um, which you creative know, creative jocks, which, which is not, even crazier. Which may not be, would not fly by standard HR practices. No, not, not at all. Not. not at all. Um, there's a, a chef I want to interview. I think she's the. Chef or chef of Barnviva, mm-hmm. um, Navy, right? Navy Venegas, I think is her name. Mm-hmm. And uh, I reached out to her recently, and you know, I get a lot of a lot of the same thing from these chefs. Like, you know, they're like, I don't think that I'm interesting enough to be on a podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I feel like everybody's interesting, somewhat interesting, you know. Also, a podcast gives you the flexibility to not be interesting sometimes. Like, a lot of times, I sit here and I do the show. You're leading the whole conversation? No, I just feel like there's no way anybody's going to like this. And then I'll... I mean, well, (laughs) we don't know. I'm just harsh. And then I watch it back, and I'm like, oh, there's some pretty good things there. Some good nuggets of of knowledge. I mean, you don't do extensive biographical research no, I before don't. you go like I should. You're not like, oh, here's something that like the people want to know a little bit more about. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like introductory. Yeah. You're learning as the audience is learning exactly. about someone's life story. Mm-hmm. Um but there's some things where it's like, wait a minute. Now in this article that I'm gonna <laughs> pull out from like six years ago, you said this. Well look I'm tell I told you already we're gonna do a new show before the pre roll. It's gonna be right here in this fucking You want room. like straight shooting? We're gonna straight shoot. As they would say on, in wrestling. On topics. The we'll hard do. the hard topic. Exactly. We're gonna get that going here in a few months, maybe a month, I don't know, whenever Andrew Chen gets some time. Uh but we are going to make this a regular thing every week. We're gonna talk about the articles that come out. We're gonna talk about fucking pop ups, restaurants, shit that's happening. It's going to be short. It's going to be like 30 minutes. That way, some kind of 
I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, we just can't can't be doing three hour podcasts and expect people to listen to every single one I do with you. So that's why we're gonna cut it to twenty to thirty minutes. Hit slam bam, thank you, ma'am. All the shit that's going on in the food world, eater pop ups, scandals, movies. Sometimes that's a lot. You know, the brown to cover. It is, but we'll pick. We'll, we'll we'll you know we're making a show so. Well, I'm in, I'm in okay. show business now. Quick recap. Right? <laughs> Michelin Guide, Florida. That happened. James yeah. Beard Awards. That happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, World's 50 Best is next month. Is it? Yeah. Okay. World's 50 Best. Now coming out of Who's London. number one last year? It was Noma. Noma's number Again. one. Again. Again, always. <laughs> but in their rule, in their current rules, it no can't one can win number win. one. Two years Twice. in a row? Yeah. That's bullshit to me because then that feels Which like... Which is weird because they already won and they're like, well, it's Noma too. And I'm like, but it's still Noma. Like, it's still <laughs> Noma, 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 Noma. But like, it's a different restaurant. But it's, like, it's kind of But Lemon Master Works, like vegan now. Mm-hmm. So shouldn't they qualify? Like, they're totally different concepts. But no, it doesn't count. Hmm. I'm like, but to me, that's weird. I don't like that personally. I think if you're an open, active restaurant, you should be in the game. Right. But I think there's also some concern. Some people, they're like, what if we drop in the rankings? It's a little biased. And I'm like, okay. Well, also, people need to understand that even though you drop in the rankings, you're still 100 of the millions of fucking restaurants that there are in the world. So that to me seems a little it just seems egotistical weird. for chefs to be like, we we went from fifty to seventy six. It's like motherfucker, you're still in the one hundred. It's like basically you're trying to get number one. <laughs> yeah, and then you drop out of the race altogether. <laughs> yeah, you're that's like, how these chefs are. And now we're gone. We're not doing it. Like I remember one year we trolled them. Uh, right, Chef Costa trolled them. Yeah, and I don't think we ever got on that list again. After well, that. and and. Two. And Sue did, yeah. 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 So I guess they don't like have a, that much. Not like a total. No. <laughs> but I thought it was hilarious. It's like. Well, it's, it's like. Who's behind it? What's the process? Oh, for it's sure. It's kind of arbitrary sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it does matter. Yeah. As much as you were like, oh, it doesn't matter. It does fucking matter. It does matter. No, I, I hear you. Um, Michelin stars, they matter. They matter. What Eater because says like, about you, it matters. Some things matter more than others. Yeah. Or they have more weight. But, like, definitely, like, movies, like, sports, TV, they have to take into account a lot of people. They have to take into account. Because not everyone has the time or the interest to follow this scene and be like, to rate every single restaurant and movie. Well, like, people need guides. Mm-hmm. People need lists. Mm-hmm. Well, they have, maybe they don't need it, but they want it because it's, like, a very concise digestible information. It's not like, oh, is this number one? Well, it depends. What's your taste? They don't want to hear that. <laughs> it's subjective, but they don't want to hear that. They want to know what's the best, even though it's like, it's impossible to say. Like, there's, it's, a, it's literally subjective value that we're talking about. You could say like, there's certain metrics that are provable about you know, restaurants. Not many covers that they but, like, in terms of quality, I mean, my best might not be even in someone else's top 20. Right. So. That happens. But it's a nice thing to say. What do you think, in your opinion, is the publication and or list that has, that is the most truthful? Really tough. We'll narrow it down to three. How about that? Instead of just one. I mean, like, I think Michelin can be, but I find that it varies per territory, per right. region. Okay. Like, so, like, a three star here is more meaningful than a three star in LA. Mm-hmm. I would argue that California has a lot of star information. Personally, um, but that's their guide, so that's right up to them. That's what they do. Yeah. Maybe I'm just wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm 
being too harsh or like they're saying one star is I think should be zero. There should be there are two that should be one. Are there any threes that you've had that you're like this is not a three star? Yeah. Uh, do you think that that is just? But it, what, what do I know? It's like that's my perceived yeah. idea of what a star is. That one night. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's impossible unless you're an inspector and going in multiple times. It's kind of impossible to say. Hey. Yeah. I mean, like you're gonna take this like one evening of the year, one time, and assess the entire like restaurant operation. Hmm. No. That's just not good metrics. That's a good like science. But also, who has the time and money to do that? Do you, uh, I'm sure as a person who's in restaurants all the time, you get invited to restaurants all the time. You probably have a lot of complimentary meals. Do you let that complimentary meal sort of uh, inhibit your judgment? Are you more likely to be like, oh, yeah, but it was free? I mean, you or, always, you're or, always going to take that into account, even mm-hmm. if people try to remove it. I, at the end of the day, I'm not a food critic. Right. Uh, I, if you look, there's no, maybe except for like a Yelp review from like 2008 mm-hmm. or something. There, there are no reviews by me, formally. So I'm just like a diner. I'm, a, a, I'm here for enjoyment, hopefully. A gourmand. I would not say that. <laughs> but <somebody laughs> Some people, <laughs> hey, what they do is their own business. Yeah. I am uncomfortable personally with like using a handle where I like insert like eats or like foodie or like gourmand in my in my handle. But you are all those things. But I'm also like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. You are all those things, man. I will say, like, I feel like you don't give yourself enough credit. You know. I think, unfortunately, price is always going to be a factor mm-hmm. for creators because it is expensive. Mm-hmm. It is opportunity cost. And if you're spending the higher cost, the higher, longer the wait list, the more difficult it is to go there, whether it be due to pricing or just lack of reservations, the higher your expectations will be. You could try to be like, oh, I go in there without any bias. That's impossible. You're always approaching things with bias. You could try to like downplay that as much as you can, but you can't remove who you are as a person, mm-hmm. how you were raised, what ingredients you like or dislike as a kid. Were you having a bad day? Yeah. Yeah. So do you think that the newspaper publications like – the SF Chronicles should have more than one food critic? I don't think they can afford it. Right. But in a, in a perfect world, like, yeah, they'll probably, you know, even like Cisco and Ebert back in the day. You had Cisco and Ebert, right? right. You had like two points of view. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that would make sense. Because a food critic these days has a lot of power. Right. A lot of power. Because we are entrusted. I mean, like, Right here, wine. Robert Parker scores make or break you financially. People care. I mean, as much as we'd be like, oh, it's just like that's a one person's opinion. People care. Some more than others, like certain writers mm-hmm. carry more weight. But we can't go everywhere. We don't have the time. We definitely don't have the money. <laughs> right yeah. so you have to pick and choose like what you're saying like well where do you how what's your criteria personally for me it's a mixture of personal connections like oh this is my friend's restaurant right or it's also like this is what intrigues me at that time right like I didn't go to French Laundry for a long time I didn't go until 2019 why is that well in part because it's like relatively local Really, that sense of urgency, where like if I were like traveling from somewhere else and coming to the Bay Area, like maybe you that definitely would, have, would have to make it more a stop. urgency. Yeah, but also like just stylistically, it it didn't like compel me in a way. Like, to me, I mean, not, not to say it's like bad, but if 
I have no, if I'm going with purely for the concept of the restaurant, mm. the style of the restaurant. That's not something where I'm like, ooh, I'm really, they're doing some interesting techniques. And they're, like, they are, it's an influential restaurant for sure, but it may not be interesting me at that specific moment in time in my mm. life. And it might change. Like, I remember once upon a time, like, Fat Duck was, like, one of my dream restaurants. Did you ever go there? I went once. How was it? Uh, it was cool to be there, but I will say, like, it, it feels dated. Okay. Because it's a very specific style. Yeah. And that, that, I mean, style, literally that giving, style was the best between, like, eh, the sound 2008 the to 2012. It's, like, literally serving you this dish with an iPod. <laughs> and it's, like, you know, and I'm like, this is like, it's cool. It's like going to a museum. Yeah. Like, a, you learn, it's like I view it as part of restaurant history. Like, a lot of people went through that kitchen. But does this really resonate with me as a diner in 2017 is the year I went there? Maybe not. A lot of things that, like, I look back on that was really interesting to me at that specific moment in time yeah. may not be there. And how do you, how does that affect you, the restaurants that you pick? Like, okay, I'm going to Napa. Is French Laundry even on the list, or are you kind of putting it on the bottom shelf? Well, I should be more supportive. Like, I should be going to more restaurants over and over again. Yeah. But there is, like, ooh, that's new to me. I've never been there. Let's check that out. Yeah. So that is a factor. I probably should be like returning to restaurants more. Uh, that newness thing, mm -hmm. but also like, are, is it? Are they doing something a little bit different, or are people talking about it? Do you go where the where mainly the people are like, hey, we need to go there? Yeah, well, especially if I'm like traveling to far away. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I try to mix. If I'm going somewhere for the first time, I try to mix like institution with, like, what's new. Like food. <laughs> if it makes sense. Yeah. Like, if you're going to L.A., you should definitely go see the shit. Like, Taqueria. Stuff like that. Yeah. You went to Yangban in L.A. Mm-hmm. How was that? Well, I went for lunch. Okay. So, maybe that's not the best for fresh food. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, it was interesting. And it was tasty for the most part. Oh, so I just left really full. Yeah, it, it's definitely some portions in there for sure. I don't know. But I mean, there's some like really great individual dishes. Yeah, the taste the the taste of the food is amazing. Like anything Chef Cat it, touches. It's a challenging fire. location. Yeah, that arts district. It's up and coming though. I feel like there's no. I mean, obviously Bestia nearby. Does Bestia, well, Damien, but. Stumptown. There's not a lot of foot traffic. Definitely not, because it's got that big bridge yeah. intersection over here. And so and you're basically going to that area for those specific for those places. Yeah. yeah. Um, Headley and Bennett is down the street. Like ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And are they still in Vernon? I don't even know. It's been so long. Yeah, it has. It's been there for a while. A yeah. long time. Yeah. Um, as far as James Beard this year. Brandon Ju Wan from mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. uh, what, Shea Pani, Shea yeah. Pani in Asheville Wan, best restaurant. Yeah. Which is crazy because I was just in Asheville. Yeah. There's a well, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say diversity picks mm -hmm. because I haven't been to every single restaurant. But even if I had, it's maybe not the best selection. Mm hmm. But there's definitely a conscious effort by the founders this year to switch from previous style of restaurants. Right. You used to see Quince in an outstanding restaurant like all the time. Yeah. Now it was, yeah, it was like, Quince restaurant in Meadowood. It wasn't even semi finalist. Saison and whatever. Yeah. I wonder. I, I didn't see the semi finalist list or anything like that. Um, it's a conscious effort to be. Right. Which is good. Well, at least they are making a fucking... But is it completely merit-based? 
I mean, I want to think that that it is because it's like it's almost like we need to think that because if you go around thinking that everybody's doing the wrong thing, then it's really a, like a scary way to live. Um, and how do you correct the mistakes that they've made? You know what I mean? Like it's not very easy. So this, I think, is the first step to doing that. And I have to believe that they, you know, maybe they just went to more. Uh, I mean, I, I, not to take away from you, but you were nominated for huge. I definitely huge. I, I would say that it's very generally speaking. It's, it's like overcompensating for the I culture say, of the I past. Could, I could say I see the overcompensation, but also, if you notice, it's like all the chefs that are doing that one fucking best new chef are then winning James Beard Awards. So it does make sense in that line. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, when you say merit based, like a lot of those chefs, Matt Horn, um, the, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, de- there's a, definitely a lot of like. Ross yeah, for sure. There, especially for sure. the people who are involved yeah. in the decision making. Yeah. So it's um, like it's really. I do think there is a also a factor of not just like oh they're minorities because like we should right be propping up more yeah black and brown chefs fuck yeah different Asian chefs that's female chefs yeah, female chefs indigenous chefs mm-hmm. but at the same time it is supposed to be based on. The food. The food. Or the food. That matters a restaurant operation. I can understand that. That's so I don't know. Like, I literally don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's also hard to trust them after they've done what they've done. It's like, okay, now you're correcting it to look good in the, in the public eye. Right. But I think that uh, it's a testament to those that won that are in the black and brown community that they accepted it willingly and weren't like, Oh, we're not gonna go. You I, know I what do, I mean? What I, I feel like I, about Michelin is like we don't know who's gonna do that. No, no. In some ways, because it's like when you look at James Beard or somebody else, even though if you don't know, you can kind of guess mm-hmm. or have a good idea of like the food writers or what who are part of the judging body. You don't necessarily know, but you can at least like this person. If not that, then some other similar thing. Right. Whereas, like, Michelin's like, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that Michelin doesn't get um, questioned for their picks? And Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> like, But I've never seen a real public but not like thing a, being like, like a, the James Beard thing. I you mean, know, there or are, the Oscars. There are people right? who will critique them for being too Euro or Japanese centric. Um, but I think they're also viewed through the lens of a certain style of restaurant. Okay. Or even world's food. Like, you'll occasionally see some claims, usually it's by eaters, where it's like, how come there's no Chinese restaurant in the world? It's like, it's diverse. It is pretty rich food tradition. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, most Chinese restaurants... Again, this is very generally speaking, because I'm sure someone's like, oh, there's the exception. I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Mm. I know it's going to happen. That they're not suited for small parties. They're like the big table, the banquet. You know? And a lot of those type of restaurants are like solo diners. Two parties. It's like the cuisine doesn't really lend itself towards that style of restaurant. Right. With some exceptions. Yeah. I recently was told that um, by an insider that the service does not matter for your three stars or two stars. The Michelin does not look at service at all. I think it's at least perceived that way. I just find it hard to believe that it's not. Like I'm like, really? I feel like there's like, whether it's true or not, there's definitely a, a perceived checklist. Yeah. I mean, w- what is an experience uh, at a three-star level without table side? I feel like you can't do that these days. Like, can you imagine there being, like, a restaurant that has no beer and wine? Like, 
with no liquor license at all. Mm-hmm. And getting three stars. And gets three stars. Yeah. No. <laughs> but if we were to go by that criteria, yeah. it would be eligible. I don't know. But I don't think so. I could be wrong. No one really knows except for them. Them. Do you think that we will know at some point? I think that'll be like wrestling. There might be like someone who comes out and be like, this is how it works. Yeah. And then they'll probably try to change it up. But like, yeah, I mean, wrestling was like secrets. Yeah, secrets forever. Now it's like, we're in on it. Like people thought it was real. We're in on it. Yeah. But then they play that, the fourth wall a little bit. Right, but do you think that they'll play the fourth wall in Michelin when they have no other choice? I'm sure someone will. When, out. like, it'll be, like, a guy on Instagram being like, what the fuck you're going to eat here? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I mean, they take that very yeah. seriously. It's like the Iron Chef thing. They don't do any blind tasting anymore. Right. And the chef, um, they do it in succession. So, like, okay, first course is due in 30 minutes. Next course is due in this many, you know? Yeah. It's not like before where it's like, everybody cooks, and then you stop, and then you serve everyone, and I'm guessing by the sec- by the time they get to the second chef, all the food's cold. Yeah. There's no point. fucking way. Good point. So I always ask myself that of cooking competitions. Like, how is the food not cold? Right. It's chopped. Like, the first guy gets reviewed, second guy gets reviewed, Everything's and then like the third guy gets reviewed. Super cold. Yeah. yeah. There's no fucking way. You know? So I think they've done a good job of changing that. And making sure that I'm gonna use the restroom. Yeah, go ahead. Because I, the, so much hoops are low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jokingly, hoops is not a sponsor, <laughs> although it could be. They could be, man. But I just love that scene in Wayne's World. <laughs> Wayne's World party on. I'm like, ah, okay. Remember, it's like a convertible. Oh right. There's a whole strategy. There's a technique. There's a whole strategy, chef. Of getting to out getting in and, and out of here. Yeah. This uh, I, I feel bad because I feel like we should have a little bit more structure. No, dude, it's fine. People, people listen to I this for that. You don't have to. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna be the f- the first or last one that we do. So don't you worry. Having Taylor's uh, suit, my buddy Tyler is getting married. Ah, well, congrats, Tyler. Yeah. Providence, LA, like most people. I haven't been to Providence in a while. But institutional restaurant at this point, right? Time and time again, Providence and LA, I'm telling you every single Michael, every, Michael Senior, every other cook that I met. I'm like, hey, where have you worked? I've worked at Providence. And um, I'm 
telling you they just over and over and over again continue to churn out talents that they do you think they'll get this year uh i don't because they would have gotten it by now if it, i think i feel like i think um, that they dramatically change yeah but i don't think you need to change that restaurant yeah i don't think and if they were going with the intention of it what's the volume there uh, they can do a lot of covers no I don't know. It's not that big. What is the largest three-star restaurant? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to be like a Robichon or something. I would guess. But there's no way that three Michelin star restaurants are doing more than 100 covers. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, I know at, at the restaurant I met with, they do like 90 or, you know, close to 100, whatever it was, but mm. never, uh, never, never over 100. Like, that's crazy. So I feel like your numbers definitely do dictate how many stars you get. Because a place like Chartered Oak, I always thought that I could get a star there. You know, I've always I looked I at it as a place I could get a star. There are some, I mean, but then it's like fucking well, the one, 600 covers a night. It's like, what the fuck? The one star category is very odd. Yeah. Because it's like some of them, I'm like, this could be two. And then there's some of them, like, this should be zero. Yeah. Some should just be a bit gourmand. But it's kind of all over. Mm-hmm. But good for them. Uh, yeah, who who knows, man? I mean, they it's have to. It's not my guide, man. They have to at least have some kind of criteria that they follow, and I'm sure that sometimes when they follow the criteria, at the end of it, they get an answer that they're even like, wait a minute, what? This place has three stars, really? It's like, yeah, we follow the criteria. You got three stars. Yeah. I don't think, I think that it has to be at this point, like, not a mathematical thing, but more than just opinion. No. Because how? Because then at that point we are putting all the onus of the restaurant industry into people's opinions. Well, we are. Yeah, but like, who named that Michelin inspector an expert in food? Has he cooked? Has she, he, she a cooked? Has have they? Oh, you know, remains become mis- a chef. It's very mysterious. Those bastards. If you're a Michelin in- inspector. Or have been. I want you on the show. I want to know. I don't know if a current one is. We'll put a fucking black mask on you. We'll fucking put a, a change your voice. Yeah, change your voice. Like, like so, and I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm down for those interviews. If there's any chef cooks out there that want to talk some truth and don't want to, you know, show people who they are, so I'll wear a ski mask with you. We'll roll here with fucking out of solidarity. With sunglasses. Because yeah, out of it's solidarity. pretty clear like, who you are at this point. Yeah, I'll have put probably cut out a, a hole. I was like, uh, uh, I was like isn't that you? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'll just take it down, chef. They won't see it anymore. And be like, who yeah. is this? Man? <laughs> For sure. Who is the man behind Suzio? Who I was like, is I think the there man? There have been several episodes to tell you who. Ninety episodes. Almost at a hundred. Almost, yeah. Wow. What yeah. a journey this has been. I probably. Broke a hundred. Uh, actually, I haven't, but I'm close. I'm closer than the ones advertised because I took all the uh, all the solo shows and I consolidated them into one show. Right. So that's, but as a recognized public. Yeah. Show. And that's gonna be, but just gonna take eight episodes to one episode. Mm. So, um, it's gonna be called all the shout outs, all the rambling. All the shout. Yeah. Mixtape of, out of to just the shit that happened to me when. Shout out to. I went to Denver when I was in I went to Mini- Minneapolis. Oh, how was Minneapolis? I thought it was pretty good. What restaurants you go to out there? I went to Demi Spoon Stable for brunch. Uh-huh. Uh, I went to Owami. Which is a spot James Beard is mm-hmm. a restaurant. Yeah. I went to Matt's Bar, which is the alleged creator of the DC Lucy Burger and Uncle Ben of Van Lines. Kind of fun. But yeah. Was it good other than that? It was a tasty burger. Yeah. yeah, tasty bar burger. You know who has a really good burger is Copas. Uh, I so have you had their burger? I have not. It's like a classic burger, like the most classic burger you've ever had, and it's delicious. And like, like American cheese. They serve it in fucking yellow paper. I mean, it's there's something about that, right? It's got like, it that's all. That's what I came to realize. Like, not to say you have to literally use craft singles, but the American cheese or process or whatever you want to call it, is kind of really important to that flavor. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, you could have a good burger with, like, cheddar or mm. whatever, literally. But if we're 
we're talking about like that style of burger, that nostalgic, that is that's a big part. Let's go uh, three restaurants in the Bay Area that you must go to tomorrow, according to Andrew Chang. Like that, I just recommend. That you were like, yeah, three recommends. Well, didn't, didn't I recommend Blaze of Lemon? Well, yeah. yeah like, except for I kind of skirted the question. Yeah. Actually didn't answer. That's what I'm saying. Because you're like, there's so many. You don't want to hurt any feelings. Well, yeah, you don't want to hurt feelings, me, right? Hurt some feelings out here. I, I have many things going on in life. I don't necessarily want to or have time to <laughs> answer every angry DM about, well, you forgot my phone. Yeah. Well, well, it's not about that, man. It's like, come on. I'm not the only podcast in the world. You know, I'm not like, when I say, hey, what's the best podcast out there? Nobody's going to, like, there's probably going to be three people that say Susio Talk. Other than that, it's going to be like. And know, bless like, them. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the support, my number one fans out there. Uh, let's see, three. Are we talking about Greater Bay Area? Or are we just talking about, like, literally Greater Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland. Like, what is, like. Fucking all the way to Richmond. Okay. But we're not going, like, Napa, Sonoma. No, no, no. We're going. Because, like, some going, definitions of areas that we're get going to the San Jose to Richmond. Okay. In Oakland. Okay. If we're taking into account the entire experience, mm-hmm. not literally just the food. Yeah. I, I think Great China is like pretty fun. Okay. Great I would say China. we're one of the better wine lists around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just it's a tasty, like, goofy spot. It really is a tasty goof spot. It's easy to go there with a large group of people. Yeah, it's not fussy. It's not it's fussy fun. at all. It's fun. It's delicious. But also, they do a very good job of, if you are interested, mm-hmm. making wine that can be very intimidating. Accessible. It's like it's a little bit more budget friendly. Right. And you think they're doing that on purpose? Yes. Or why? You just why? I think <laughs> expand appreciation for the people that actually just try this stuff. Is there another restaurant in that group? Not that I know of. No, just that one. And who's the owner? James Yu. James Yu? He's a Somal Somalier? I don't know if he's like certified. Right. But he definitely has a wine interest. How long has Great China been open? I don't know. Cause they, they used to have, have a previous location that had like a fire. So like they're currently oh, also in Berkeley. Okay. So I don't know, I know the that. full history. Mm. But. Um, I want to have him on at some point. The man. Because I mean, every sommelier within the Bay Area is always talks about that place. Because they can go there and get bottles of wine that you'd normally pay fucking an arm and a leg for. Comparative to other places. Right. You know? I mean, for a restaurant, mm-hmm. it's very good. The garlic Price fried rice is. I like the cumin lamb. The cumin did lamb. You get the, did you get the surf clam with the rice on top of it? No. Oh, definitely gotta go get it. Get that one. Okay. Yeah. Is, is the surf clam raw? No. Looks good. We used to do a lot of surf clam dishes at uh, at a wedding. Yeah. A Are you of, over the surf clam? Huh? No, it's just a big ass clam. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, do they slice it? They do some. Do they? Okay, gotcha. So they pull it out, slice it, put it back in. Yoshizumi, which I mentioned previously, San Mateo, yeah. Michelin star restaurant. What kind of cuisine? Sushi. Sushi. Okay. Um. And then I got some food. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying not to hurt any feelings. Okay. okay. You don't. Well, have I think to. if we're talking about essential, I have to throw in Zuni. Zuni Cafe. Yeah. Okay. I never been there before. What? No. Never. Are you saying I should? I mean, you're looking at me like I should go there tomorrow. I mean, many people consider it not only an essential restaurant for the Bay Area, but like the United States. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like. Japanese Zuni. Okay, yeah. cool. Same chef forever? Well, unfortunately, uh, he like passed. But, okay. But the recipes, yeah. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Better try Zuni Cafe then. Shit. If you're ever out here in San Francisco, check out Zuni Cafe. Um, well, Andrew, I will say there's going to be a lot more of these. People need to get ready. I, for I hope there's, you know, there's, need to get ready there's for a s- lot of different topics discussed. That's right. 
No, maybe not the most structured conversation. It doesn't matter. Bro. It was a natural. Right. Conversation. Yeah, it's a natural conversation, and that is the ultimate point for me of Susio Talk. We didn't mention. I say that we need to go on this tangent because it's our Mateo right now. Oh, We're, speaking of like nostalgic, <laughs> delicious. You kidding me? Uh, Steamed, uh, but they are uh, getting canceled right now. Why? Because of their extreme right wing political beliefs. This is all news to me. I'm not. I'm not in the know of Martin's potato rolls being canceled. Yeah. Again, like, so like, but D- people are trying to like not buy them. Right. Yeah. Well, it goes back to that thing that we were saying. Like, do you separate the artist from the body of work? The human being from the body of work. I mean, it's a really politically charged atmosphere, and uh, I don't think they necessarily, the people who want to boycott, want to know. I mean, of course, we unknowingly contribute money to all types of bad people. Oh, all the time. Just straight up. That's what, sorry. That's, like, no, it's true. And that's what that's what's kind of bullshit to me when some people come out and call out these companies, but I'm like, okay, did you buy Nikes? <laughs> like, are you buying gasoline? Yeah. It's that. It's for like, a really expensive price. Exactly. Are you buying gas? That's what the oil Tell companies are probably not great people. If we really wanted to cancel shit, we'd have to cancel everything at some point. But you know, some people are single issue mm. voters, and when you know for a fact this person is donating or this man, right, to a campaign that's like against your lifestyle, belief or, or lifestyle, or, yeah. yeah, your your creed, your culture, yeah, you may not. Oh, willingly want to do that. Of course, yeah. unknowingly we support. Them. Well, that's I mean that's what, you know, that's how I viewed the whole Trump thing. I was like, I was like, oh well, he's racist, so I'm not gonna support him. But or, people are supporting Goya beans, right? Exactly. So it's a similar thing. Exactly. And that's another thing that I'm like, you know, I tell my my not to get too off. No, 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 but it's true because some of my family members like talk shit about Trump, but then you have Goya products in your house. Right. So I'm like, what is it? like? Right. Well, what, you know? What's the separation? Yeah. How far removed? Are exactly. You be it's like the it? vegans that wear leather. You know, it's you know, if you're gonna fight the issue, I mean, obviously, fight the whole thing. I watched WWE. You watched WWE. Uh-huh. Not the greatest, greatest politics. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, Especially Linda. Yeah, and that's how I'm. You know, just na- trying to navigate this new world. And it's like, okay, do do I accept? This new world, do I need to enact in this new world? Uh, because I feel like we have a responsibility right now as 30 something year olds. We're going to be the old people pretty soon here. I think t- we are. In 20 years. Well, right? I am. well, right now, I found that we are the demographic. We are what everything is targeted to. We are like the status yeah. quo. I mean, look at the fucking NFL this past year with the, with the halftime show 50 Cent, Eminem. He was playing not, in the club. He was not looking good. You know? But at the end of the day, I, I beg to differ. A lot of women that I was watching that with were like, whoo! They were sweating. Uh, they were like, I, I know can't lo- believe it. I know a lot of people so, who were dragging 50 for his <laughs> I mean, yeah, let the man live. Yeah, let the man live. He's got fucking 20 shows on but they TV. Were, they were just like, like come on. They were, they were dragging well, 50 for his weight. Uh, you can't. You can't do that. But, I, you know, they're, everything's catered towards us now. You walk into any clothing store, they're playing music from our generation. The, you know, the mid-2000s to, like, 95 to 2005. That's, mm-hmm. like, the play right now. And everyone's doing it, you know? So you're um, saying that we have the potential to set the habits we, and yeah, patterns for exactly. We are upper. setting the tone right now, well, I'll say this. unbeknownst to us. The tone is not great. No, it's not great because we're living, we're living kind of in limbo where – the kids that come before us have never known anything other than having a screen in front of their face. I'm like, you know, and then the older people are like, that's what we lived under who are like, well, you are guys are extremely racist. Climate change. Blah, 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 blah. Very concerning. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of things that are very concerning. Um, but so I do COVID f- is the sub boss of this video game. And it's like, <laughs> don't you worry. Climate change is out there. That's right. I mean, look, we are definitely privileged to think that we're going to live forever or this world is just going to continue being what it is. At some point, we'll be destroyed and some fucking... Well, if I don't, like, overeat, you know, on, like, fucking butter. Yeah. I just hope that in, like, 
when I'm old, they're like figured out stem cells to the point where we can come back a little bit and live another 30 years and be like 120 before we die. But like, what's your quality of life uh, at that point? Like, I mean, definitely want to have a good quality of life. I want to be like those people that, you know, 100th birthday and he's still moving around, having a good time. Right. I don't want to be like, you know. Like, that he's 100 <laughs> and he looks <laughs> Yeah, he looks 100. He's ancient. You know, when like, you're like. Can't really pr- like <laughs> take in information yeah. well. You're just a vegetable. You're like you're physically yeah. alive. Well, there was a uh, I just read an article about the guy who um, was the first. I feel like we were about to wrap up the show. It was, we were, like, it was mean, very clear. Whatever, there was whatever, like a fine whatever. point there. There Do- was like- uh, a dude that medically assisted suicide. Jesus Christ! First we're getting guy, into some dark. The first shit. guy did that shit in we, we like Germany like, or something. We're going to talk about a child molestation. <laughs> <laughs> Euthanasia. I mean, we're covering the real issues. Dude, what? Like, this is a dark episode. Hey, Mike, hey, for whatever, whatever bro. Most of the time, people are just like, "Yeah, I, were, I like, sorry, I went to culinary yeah. school at this place," and it's like, and uh, this episode, we, we, the, the, this, this is this is a dark episode <laughs> where we're going into. <laughs> I'm gonna give a warning because the last time I talked about some hardcore shit, somebody was like, "Hey, man, I went through that. That's not cool. You got to give a warning." And it hurt. Like, oh, well, what was it? Since we already are time out. It was um. Sexual assault, but it was the fact that it was even mentioned, or was it like the way yeah, it was framed? The, it, no, not at all. It like it was a trigger. It, wasn't, it wasn't. It was a trigger. That it it was wasn't framed, framed any way. That the, the woman was just telling the story, and as she told the story, this listener heard it and was right. like super triggered. She wasn't like prepared for that. Uh, yeah, and you know they were like, "Hey, will you just like please warn us if there's gonna be anything like that?" Because I was severely tri- triggered by that, and like. You know, you just need to yeah, know that people listen to fair. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's very. It was very fair. It was very. The the way that he wrote it to me was amazing. And people go through shit all the time. And you know, I would I would hate to be that guy that's bringing up hurtful things like like that. But I mean, also, unfortunately, I'm, it will come up because it's I'm not unfortunately gonna, part of life. I'm not going to shy away from it either because that would be wrong. And that's what we've been doing for so long is yeah. sweeping shit under the rug. Not talking about it, and then that's where we're at. Well, uh, yeah, because no, like we were talking earlier, no chef talks shit about a restaurant they worked at that they didn't have a good experience at, that they maybe got overworked and promised things that didn't ever happen. And those CDCs, those chefs are, they don't want to talk about the shit, you know. And it's time to just be honest, because you're not talking shit, you're just telling your truth. And at the end of the day, I want to invite those people that feel offended to come on the show. Let's talk about this shit, you know, and let's come through a solution. The best thing you that think I w- there is, a I solution? think, I think that I, I think that there's some things that you can't come back from. other than like catharsis. The, like you, do you think there actually, is? you, you can't come back from certain things. I feel like, but just, I feel like if I can get two people in the room that have had a past conflict, then that means at least that the subject that we are talking about, you can come back from. I think there's some there's things you're gonna that, be like it's gonna be like that like MTV show ghosted maybe <laughs> and you're gonna like come in it's like this is the chef of a restaurant that you said sucked and he's <laughs> here unannounced yeah right and just I'll, like Maury and I'll be like, bring out the chef I actually have somebody upstairs right now Andrew Chang I will probably would just be like this is gonna sound bad honestly I do not remember you. <laughs> There you go. Andrew Chang comes to your restaurant, forgets about it soon after. It just didn't make an impression. On me. <laughs> There's a lot of chefs out there like, fuck you, dude. You're like, hey, it don't matter, man. You? If it's not Andrew Chang, it's going to be somebody else. You know, so it might as well be a person that actually cares about it. like the CM Punk where he's like, for you, that was the greatest day of your life. For me, it was Friday. <laughs> That's like when... Uh, when the Rock's roasting Triple H, he's like, "You think you got canceled because of your Rudy Pooh friends at Madison Square Garden? You got canceled because you absolutely suck." It was like a promo before a pay per view. It was like a 1990. Yeah, and, and to get back to the original, or yeah. one of the many original topics, some people, unfortunately, probably me included, can't handle criticism mm. in a very mature manner. It's hard, right? I would say that we, right now, are going into a world of scrutiny if we are already in it. So you might as well change with the times and accept 
that you will be questioned and and you're going to be questioned te- not just oh, for your ability. You're kidding me? Tested and on every front. You're going to be questioned, scrutinized for your associations. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, with vendors, with investors, with like and you're going to be like, "Well, how was I supposed to know like the entire moral character of this person that I'm somewhat affiliated yeah. with?" Yeah. Like Martin's potato. Mm-hmm. Now it's like now you can't eat fucking Martin's potato rolls. No. Well, you can. Yeah. Like, literally, you can. What did they do exactly? I don't want to summarize it in an inaccurate way, but many people are disagreeing with the political affiliation. Right. I mean, far right. Whatever. You know? Um, I just would hate to, because I know that there's some people that I know and like that are probably far right. And I don't know, am I to alienate those people because they care about politics? Like, I don't know. Racist. I think, not I think racist. Well, like, I'm not well, well, like, talking to them. I'm like, talking, what the fuck? I think there's a, there's, there's a gradient. Yeah, right, exactly. Before you get to that Exactly. Point. Like, obviously, there's going to be some people who are like, you're conservative. Mm-hmm. And then there's some who are like, you know, and know. they're part of the insurrection. Yeah. That's right. I got to say, some of the best TV in the past few weeks was that that January 6th uh, um, fucking hearing they had, the press conference or whatever it was. <laughs> Fire. Fire drama on that show. Whoever edited that, I mean, they were editing it live, but Fox News didn't cover it. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why, right? <laughs> but uh, I will say, like, that's the scary part about this world is to know that all the news that you watched growing up is bullshit and it was all financially based and you know like i watched fox news a couple times when i was young i did i know what i was watching no not at all it was just on because well, i mean it's the it, news it, right it is important trust to understand news. where yeah they are li- then to say you have to agree mm-hmm. i but would you say understand. you can't deny that watch these people both. exist that's all i'm saying watch both they have this view don't just watch fox news don't just watch this watch everything also breaking points on youtube is a great middle of the road um news that they're trying to basically take the power away from the big media and they have differing opinions sometimes and they just talk about things very openly there's no agenda they just give you the news the way it is they tell their opinions and move on and i think that that is a cool thing about youtube and all this right. like new if channels if you agree what factually happened that's the problem I right, right 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 it's like i guess you could you say okay this is happening but they'd be like that didn't not even come to an understanding of what is real and what is not real. <laughs> I don't know how you can actually. There's no point get in a fucking yeah. debate. That is their chef. No, I get it. I for sure get it. But um, no. Two twenty chef. That was my room in college. So that's what we're gonna leave this. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's right. I, this might be good. Yeah. Susie so, so talk signing off. Get yourself some. I was like, we are. I. Hopefully, Hoops doesn't get canceled. Hoops is not going to get canceled. Why would they get canceled? They're not doing shit. I'm not saying that they will. I'm just saying, hopefully, they don't. Because of the conversation that we had here today? No, I mean, just for some, like, unrelated reason. And then, like, by coincidence, it's like, oh, oh yeah. We're, <laughs> we're like, uh. uh. All I'm saying is, if somebody got something to say about anything that we talked about on the show, susutalk.gmail.com, I will talk about it openly. We can talk through it. So there's nobody out there like, I can't believe he said that. We got to fucking do this. Fuck that. All right, this is a new world. This is an honest world. Fucking Sucio Talk podcast. Peace out. All right. Andrew Chang, say bye to the camera. This camera. Goodbye, camera. (laughs) Sucio Talk. Out.